everybody welcome back to another batman news weekly this is episode 216 in year five and we are opening with some breaking news well it's breaking news for me not breaking news for clay clay you want to let them know what is going to be happening for the next couple weeks yeah so i will not be available for the podcast for the next two weeks because i am moving out of state not only out of state but literally across the country um, which is absolutely wild. My wife and I have uh, found jobs elsewhere, and so we are moving. Uh, the only crazy thing is that because of the way us getting the apartment works, the times that we're starting our jobs and everything else, we're having to leave in like two days. Uh, so we're literally packing everything up that we can. Uh, thankfully, the apartment that we're getting is fully furnished, so we only need the essentials. But yeah. Uh, we're making a giant leap in moving out of state. This is the first time that I've done this in over 15 years, uh, I think. Uh, especially the first time I've done it on my own as an adult. But uh, yeah, it's pretty wild, uh, pretty crazy. Didn't think this was going to be on my bingo card for the year of 2023. Uh, you know, tail end of 2023 at that. But yeah, uh, Juice will still be doing the podcast for the next two weeks. He was able to uh, run a solo uh, podcast a couple weeks ago, uh, so he knows that he can do it. I know he can do it, so it should be fine. Uh, but there will still be other content by me on the YouTube channel. So, of course, we've been uh, pushing out shorts and long-form videos. I have a lot planned uh, to actually be in the can by tomorrow or the next day. Uh, so that way you guys can see all of that. And it's it's a lot of fun information. Coolio, coolio. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I legit just learned about this from the the start of this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. So crazy stuff. Uh, the crazy. Uh, I guess we're going to be watching the movies on our own uh, from now on. So yeah. to coordinate when that happens. Yeah, uh, is, and it is where you're moving in a different time zone. You don't have to say where you're going, is. but... Okay, it is. So. It's, I, I will. I will say this. It is set up a hour ahead of you. Uh, uh, so okay. I'm Eastern Standard Time now. Okay. Uh, when when I do move, I'll be Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, man. Uh, it's gonna be kind of crazy. Uh, I don't even. So I guess what Aquaman's gonna be the first movie then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to plan that out. Uh, so crazy stuff, ladies and gentlemen, uh, crazy stuff. But yes, like as Clay said, I will be continuing the podcast. I am very big on consistency and very big on keeping things going. Uh, the only time we ever missed was because of the anxiety stuff. And I hated every episode we missed. I think we missed like two, maybe that's about it. But um, I prefer to keep you guys still in the loop with everything that's going on. Luckily, there hasn't been much going on. So the podcast probably shouldn't be that long. Um, and hopefully you can stand my voice by itself for two weeks at least. But I cannot wait until the juice rants on all the comics that we absolutely hate. Yeah, that's going to be, <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to end up covering at least Batman by myself, yeah. right? Um, yeah. so we'll see. And I'm not happy with the one comic we covered this week. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. We'll keep seeing what other what other topics and stuff show up uh, over the next two weeks. But yeah, that is going to be the plan going forward. Um, as Clay has been doing recently, he's going to be doing the content on the channel. That has been slowed. Uh, I've been I have what's today the second. I have s like eighteen days to launch a new channel. Uh, so I've been just grinding that. I have been I've been doing anything else. So it's been uh, kind of crazy. The edits are really long and they take forever. So, uh, yeah, that's what uh, we've been up to. But this is a Batman podcast and we are going to be talking about some Batman things. And the first thing I want to talk about is this weird thing that has been going on on social media with Diddy. Some people our age would remember him as Puff Daddy. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, Diddy... Is apparently a big Batman fan. Uh, he dresses up as the Joker every year, and he ledgers Joker, and he goes all out talking about like getting the prosthetics. He has probably since he has since he is like a billionaire, I think probably has an authentic you know Joker costume. He probably bought Heath Ledger's dead body costume for all I know because he's got all that money. <laughs> um, but like 
he is in a bit of controversy because he revealed on Instagram that WB sent him an a, ce- a cease and desist to stop dressing up as the Joker for Halloween. Now, this obviously confused a lot of people because if you have kids or have ever went trick or treating, you know superheroes are a very big costume. And why is WB not cease and desisting a bunch of kids? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so Diddy went on this rant. He was like, I got a six page email about that I can't dress up as the Joker anymore because WB says they don't want me to. And he makes it seem like he's a victim in this situation where he's like, they don't even want me to have fun because it's too good or something like that. Right. I don't think he says that, but he's basically kind of just saying like, Oh yeah, they don't want me to do this anymore. And so of course you see the internet be like, Oh, why, why can't he do it? You know, some people bring in race. Some people are like, Oh, they just hate him because he's really good at it. And he's fun with it. And He was like, all right, WB, I'm not going to dress up as a Joker. You win. But wait for Halloween. I'm going to go even bigger. And so what he does this time around on this past Halloween, he dresses up as Christian Bale's Batman, has the actual tumbler from Mm -hmm. Batman. And he, he actually, I don't know if this was CGI or if he paid somewhere to build this thing. But he also has the bat cave, the one with all the, the lights. Yeah, the uh, the mobile bat cave that yeah. they had or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he goes all he also like gets a little Bruce Wayne, like his own version, like a little kid, and they're like talking to him. He ba- basically makes a little movie out yeah. of having all this Batman stuff. And he calls himself the darkest knight, which I think is pretty funny. And yeah, he just makes this big ass thing. He had like parts of streets shut down and there was all these people watching him be Batman. And so, of course, everybody's like, did he? Oh, shit. He showed them. Fuck you, WB. You're the craziest. And I was like, why? I was like, there's no way they sent him a cease and desist because people dress up as celebrities dress up as Catwoman every fucking year. Yeah. Like people do Batman every. Uh, what's his name? Was it Travis Scott that had the cockroach Batman? I forget which person had the. Tra- oh, I don't know shit. if it was Travis Scott. I might be wrong. Uh, but there was another hip hop star that had all the like they had the cockroach Batman suit because it was brown, which is the yeah. worst decision ever. And uh, he got clowned for it. I remember that. That was like two years ago, I think. But anyways, um, so like nobody's ever gotten a cease and desist for- before, and so I'm just kind of like, that doesn't make sense. I was like, there's just no way. And I found out why, because I started reading the comments and people were like, it's probably because of this. And I follow a YouTube link and Diddy made a tequila commercial as the Joker. And I'm like, that is clear trademark infringement, copyright, trademark, whatever the proper one is. You cannot promote a product as something else that is owned by somebody else. You just can't do it. Like, that is pure copyright. Mm -hmm. And so WB had every fucking right to send him a cease and desist. They could have sued him, but they were like, hey, just don't do it anymore. But that commercial is still around? Like, it's up everywhere? It is on YouTube. It is literally on YouTube. Now, could you... I mean, I'm pretty sure maybe a lawyer could be like, oh, well, that's a parody. But it's an actual product. So that's the problem. Um, whether he didn't, he might have not paid to put it on TV, but he put it like on YouTube. My thing is, like, when it comes to parodies or the likeness of, you have to change something dramatically to make it not be like that said uh, character or whatnot. Yeah. Right? The way that Diddy does his costumes, mm-hmm. it is verbatim that character. Yeah, I'm uh, telling you, I, I feel like he probably just paid the actual costume designers because they're yeah. legit. Um, although he, he is like a 50 plus year old man, so his Batman's got a little gut, you know, hey, everybody's got a little <laughs> gut nowadays. But I just didn't think it was uh, pretty crazy how far he went. But I just I wanted to talk about this because I know how the Internet is. I know the Internet likes to pick a side and fight for that side without doing any damn research. And look, I like people that love Batman as much as Diddy does. He seems like he's throwing a lot of money behind his fandom, which I think is cool. I don't like misinformation. You know what I mean? And every time we 
maybe talk about something and we get it wrong, we try to bring it back up and be like, hey, you know, last week we fucked up, yada, yada. Uh, I don't think it happens too much. We usually say, hey, take this with a grain of salt is usually kind of what we do. Um, yeah. And I think it's very rare that we're like flat out lying about a topic. But um, yeah, so I, I just want to bring this up because I saw a lot of people like going after WB saying this is bullshit. How can you do that? Yada, yada. It's because he made a commercial as the Joker and you can't do that. Like even YouTubers know, like you got to be really careful with that shit. And and I understand, especially now, since the white public is being more and more aware of the fact that giant corporations make shit tons of money mm -hmm. uh, off of literally the smallest things that they own. There is a big like fuck the man type of mentality, yeah. Especially nowadays, mm -hmm. and so I understand like doing that for the sake of oh it being wb versus diddy yeah. but it's still diddy he has a shit ton of money like, yeah he's a billionaire <laughs> you <laughs> don't need to be fighting for him or yeah. having these stupid arguments um but yeah I, I i think that it's valid uh to to go and search out these things uh because yeah. i mean i had no idea you you <laughs> you sent me a message saying hey make sure the diddy stuff is ready for the podcast i was like mm -hmm what yeah <laughs> i had no idea what you were talking about whatsoever and i vaguely remember his uh joker costumes mm -hmm. and and the buzz around that but i had not heard about this batman thing and then when i clicked the links it started popping up all over my twitter feed after that. yeah so it's it's wild man yeah here's the thing i don't know if he just did the same joker costume every year and like, like you gotta really love that if you're gonna do that every single year. You know what I mean? Um, because that's what the way he made it seem. Uh, but uh, again, it, it goes down to him making a tequila commercial. Like, was uh, but let's let's be serious. Was there never a costume or a character when you were younger and you were just like, I want to be this character every single year? I don't know, man, um, because like I remember my mom getting somebody to make me a green, po green Power Ranger costume, but it was made out of like, remember how costumes used to be made of that like felt Felts? scratchy material? <laughs> yes. It was made out of that. I, I, I love like, how I knew what you were going to say yeah. before, I even said it, before it's, you said it. It's like the stuff you find at craft stores now that like you make projects out of when you're in elementary. That's what costumes oh, used to be man. made out of. And it was like, so we didn't have, uh, hot, what is the, the big costume shop that opens every year? Um, you know, uh, the one that uh, takes up every abandoned store, uh, spirit Halloween. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we didn't, we didn't have spirit Halloween. We didn't even have Joanne's. It was, Hey, let's go to Hobby Lobby. Yeah. And we go or, to uh, the party city or party, party city. city. The yeah. One. And like, and it was a madhouse to get into party city. It was like a concert in there. Like you could not, is there anything left? Is there anything left? Like they're just man, those were wild it. days, man. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy to to like I, I had that, but like I remember being like a cop and like doing other shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, I was Scorpion from Mortal Kombat three years in a row. Really? <laughs> yeah, See, when I, I was little, I can't recall being the same thing many times. Like I remember being the Ninja Turtles one year for sure. Um maybe scream because scream was pretty big back in the day yeah um so i don't know i, I remember that but it's funny because I, I did take my niece uh trick-or-treating on halloween and uh it's it's a big family thing now that we go with her and like i dressed up as ken because i have the i'm ken enough hoodie <laughs> so i was ken from barbie and um uh, my my brother my sister-in-law and my niece were the adams family so because nice. my niece saw Wednesday and she's just like in love with it. So she That's was awesome. Wednesday. I shit you not. My niece was in character the whole time. She would not smile for pictures because Wednesday doesn't smile. So <laughs> she would not smile. And uh, my my mom was all like, come on, give me a photo. And she was like, nope, the Wednesday doesn't smile. And so it was really cool. That was one of the hottest costumes, man. There was so many little girls as Wednesday. And like, it was cool. No, dude. So you you talk about being kin, uh, mm. just because of us kind of being down south or whatever. I legit saw a Mexican. Of course, it was yeah. a Barbie box. It was a kin box, uh -huh. and it had kin 
but then it had like a freaking for sale sign like small plastic uh <laughs> poster board that said mexi on the with like sharpie yeah. and then the actual kin logo That's on the box cool. it was awesome yeah man so we, we went to this like area and we, we shake I, I said this uh like i couldn't believe it we went to this one house and fucking tim duncan was just there which is the nba star from san antonio everybody knows that uh won us four championships it was fucking i like i did a double take and i was like no nah. <laughs> and and uh yeah one of my family members was like no that was them and then we saw photos later on in the night that was clearly him and i was just like That's awesome. holy shit just in a random neighborhood dude nobody would like you would not assume and so that was kind of cool um but yeah so that was uh some pretty cool highlights the craziest one of the craziest costumes i saw dude had to have been i don't know like when kids are maybe like three two or three when they can walk really well by themselves at this point yeah uh saw because this child was definitely smaller than my niece and dude they were chucky and they had oh, a that terrifying dude oh, we saw God. them from far away and it was just like this little chucky walking by themselves with a knife and we were like yo what the heck <laughs> oh, no, but no, like no. it was crazy dude it was funny and i think the the parents were like uh michael myers and like another like it was all that's cool family, which I think was there's cool. there's a guy here in this small town that i live in uh this family has one of the one of the biggest houses in my town mm -hmm. uh and every year he's michael myers and they have like loud music and like the flashing lights in front yeah. of his house but he walks the entire street and like it's basically a challenge of like hey if you're you know brave enough to get past me mm -hmm. then you can get candy at my house nice. and they give all the good stuff they give the sodas and like all oh, sorts okay. of stuff the popcorn balls and all yeah. that stuff did you see that i don't know if it was a tiktok or a video on on twitter that girl that was giving out two liters i don't know if no. you saw that the dude fuck? there was this chick that was giving out two liters for for halloween dude her whole kitchen, like, you know, you worked at like a department store before, right? You know how like these yeah, yeah, yeah. two liters get stacked on stacked on stacked? Dude, yeah. I'm talking about like three stacks high, all through her kitchen, through her living room, up her stairs, and all yeah, of her upstairs. Damn. I was like, how many people live in your area? Like, Jeez, I, dude, I can only imagine if she didn't have a lot of trick-or-treaters, which apparently is a big thing now. Like, there, there was a lot of people that didn't have trick-or-treaters in the area. Yeah, no, I I noticed the lack of trick or, tre trick or treaters this year, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, it's not like I would. And things change, of course. Yeah. We've been through like a pandemic; like mm -hmm. things definitely change. It, Halloween was also on a Tuesday this year, yeah. so you have to take some things into account. But I I very much noticed that there was a lack of groups of people mm -hmm. and like quote-unquote walking traffic throughout my town yeah um, because when we were kids it used to be like a yeah. freaking crazy town you know yeah yeah i mean yeah we, i guess when you think of the climate it's very different we also didn't really have shootings all the time when we were younger yeah um which is crazy which that same night somebody got like shot at one of the malls here so Jesus which Christ. is like crazy so like yeah man i can i can understand it like the, the world is a scary place whether it's a disease or just violence like i can understand why things are calming down over time but where i was at it seemed pretty cool but i, I just like the old man in me already like there was like the teenage boys in a group that were like oh yeah fuck yeah bro and i'm like yo dude there's kids around here you know what i mean like i'm like <laughs> chill out but i'm i was like i was probably the same way you know but now that i'm older i'm like these fucking degenerate kids go <laughs> uh but anyways uh didn't see too many uh batmans or anything though to be honest yeah um yeah man i can't say i saw like a lot of superhero costumes there was a lot of among us and fall guys mm -hmm. um, i saw a lot of those you know i saw a baby groot uh, a few times a lot of wednesday for the girls um and then surprisingly probably... one of the one of the big costumes that's still very popular in my neighborhood apparently is the inflatable t-rex yeah that's still popular saw a lot of those saw a lot of the uh kidnapped alien costume oh, where the aliens kidnapping yeah. somebody <laughs> saw a lot of that uh the inflatable stuff is huge though like i think mm -hmm. a lot of people really love those we did not have that shit back in the day nah. so um 
yeah, pretty pretty wild. And then, of course, you're you're very typical like horror characters. But moving on from Halloween talk, uh, what is this? Why Max is so important to the DCU topic? Yeah, so uh, you know, I, I took a page out of your book and decided, hey, let me go scroll down CBR to see what's going on here, uh, because again, not a whole lot of uh conversations around anything batman recently mm -hmm. but i think uh there is a uh, uh article titled paradise lost proves why the dc universe needs max and so i started reading the article it's just basically telling how important it is for a streaming service like max to really touch on the prequel setting mm -hmm. of a universe whereas when you're looking at shows from a shared universe like the MCU and things like the very popular WandaVision, you have Loki and everything else, you're still very much staying in line of what has been shown. Mm -hmm. uh, and they went on to say that Max has had a variety of content before. Like, of course, it was HBO, then it became HBO Max, then, of course, Max. So HBO has always had a wide variety of content. It's never been like just one genre. It's been several different genres. And it's saying that within itself is why the DCU's home is so perfect with WB, mm -hmm. uh, with Max being on its side. And so my question to you is in regards to, because uh, there is a lot of talk about uh, the MCU right now. I don't know if you've heard, but like, People are saying we're watching the death of the MCU before our eyes right now. I, I saw so many comments uh, the other day, uh, yesterday, saying, man, when when did the MCU become the DCEU? Yeah. I was like, God damn. I wonder if it's like, because, you know, a lot of people don't like to admit it, but, like, you can look throughout history and see, like, there's a cycle of things, like, who has power, how power changes throughout time, yada, yada, like, you know, how history repeats itself, you know, that old saying. I want to know it. Maybe it's just not possible to have two superhero things happen. Now, granted, this is me saying that DCU is going to be successful. Um, yeah. But, like, as of the moment right now, DCU is about to start and the MCU seems to be falling. Yeah. Is it going to be a change in the tide? Um, which would be kind of interesting. But, yeah, I've, I've seen all of that. I've seen people talking about how She-Hulk apparently had a $225 million budget, which was more than the Avengers. Yeah, so most of the Disney Plus shows uh, have over $200 million That's insane. Uh, of a budget. Uh, but going back to my question is, like, we know that recently uh, WB also did a uh, contract for animation with mm -hmm. Amazon. So this really setting it in stone like how max is so important whereas a lot of people were actually worried that wb was kind of spreading out like to amazon it's going to be yeah. on max and all of these things people were like man i'm gonna have to subscribe to seven different things just to watch the dcu is it so important for them to have these different avenues to tell to tell stories and i and i think the answer is very obvious like yes it is mm -hmm. but giving the the example that they gave uh that they gave uh paradise lost which being a prequel to the wonder woman story like do you think it's a necessity to kind of strive towards that with other characters in the dcu like do we need a god forbid a gotham in a dcu setting no, I don't think so, um, because the MCU would tell you otherwise, right? Yeah. I mean, they didn't need it before. It's nice. I think I think shows and movies are the right way to go, but you can't do them without showrunners. I don't know what the MCU was thinking there. Yeah. But I don't think James Gunn would allow that to happen. Uh, as somebody who has done TV and movies, I'm pretty sure he knows how important that stuff is. And James Gunn has also said he's somebody that doesn't stray away from the script. So he's probably going to be like, yo, your scripts need to be like solidified. Yeah. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think HBO is an important factor. But we've seen that Zaslav is just like, 
uh, everything's going to theaters. Like, you know, it's not going to HBO. He killed yeah. everything that was in the works that was supposed to go straight to Max. Yeah. So, um, but I think Gunn is just like, yo, this is how important it is. So there's going to need to be stuff like this. So maybe Gunn was the one that told him, like, look at how well Peacemaker did. Like, you can't just get rid of those shows. And so that's probably was like, well, majority of stuff needs to be in theaters. And Gunn was like, yeah, sure. And so yeah. we'll probably see a lot of that. But no, I think I think shows are important because like like I just said, I mean, look at the buzz. Peacemaker was one of the only things people really liked, you know. From yeah. The last and surprisingly, it's opening theme and dance became a TikTok trend. Yeah. For a short while. So, yeah. Which you think people would have automatically cringed at. Now, granted, I saw it once. I liked it. I never needed to see it again. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like there are some intros that like majority of anime intros. I'm like, I, I could sit through this. But yeah. like, you know, some TV interests. I'm like, I don't need to see this again. Daredevils was cool. I always like seeing Daredevils. That one was awesome. And uh, Dexter's, which is very creepy, but I love Dexter's intro. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, it's very, very minimal stuff. But yeah, I, I think it is important. I just don't. Um, it's not necessary. I don't think. Yeah. So, but I do think it's important to the plan. And I think it'll work better because not everybody can go to the movies theaters nowadays you know what i mean so yeah, like allowing sure. people to see the movies you know 45 days later 60 days whatever hopefully way later because that means the theater releases will be great but um i don't know i think i do think max should come out and say like hey we're not going to release these movies on max for like x amount of months you know just so people aren't like well I'll just wait because 45 days is not long 45 days isn't long, but even I even saw that uh, the latest Indiana Jones is coming to uh, Disney Plus after 155 days yeah. since release. And I'm like, I think there does need to be a happy medium because mm -hmm. like waiting too long, you get people to completely forget about it. And I don't yeah. know if that's such a great thing either. You know, I think three months is fine. Because you figure it stays, you you hope it stays in theaters for at least 45 days. Yeah. And then, but you, you can't give people an incentive to wait. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. So yeah. I think three months is the happy medium. Because what, 150 days is what, six months? Yeah, close, give or take. Close to it, yeah. So I, I would wait three months. I think that's the fair, you know, that's a every quarter you drop, you're dropping new movies. I think that's yeah. a fair, fair thing there. Um. And I think I think you know Netflix is showing everybody like oh y'all thought we were stupid bitches with the password sharing and all this stuff they're making bank right now like yeah. they're like back on top apparently their like ad service one is the most popular one but did you also hear that they're getting rid of it like they're I th I th no 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 sorry no 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 I heard they're Not, improving it they're improving it. It's Disney Plus who's getting rid of their like ad stuff. It's it's so weird. Like apparently, uh, Disney Plus's ad uh price. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, they're not getting rid of it. They're actually pushing the price up. That's what it was. Oh, okay. And I'm just like, yeah. you you give people the option to pay a cheaper rate just to get ads, so they can mm -hmm. still have their shows that they want to watch, and then immediately raise the price to it. That's yeah. fucked. I feel like they. I feel like they've been jumping prices like every six months. That's what it feels like. Disney Plus has been really weird with their prices lately, but the biggest jump has been immediately after the writer strike. They they bumped up their prices. I usually do a year long subscription to Disney mm -hmm. Plus, and it was because the very first time that I signed up for Disney Plus, I did the three year. Uh, okay. uh promotion that they did and so i was like okay i'll just do that i won't remember it for another three years and then we'll figure it out when it, when it's done and they automatically signed me up for a one-year renewal mm -hmm. and so i've just been doing that every single november um don't know if i'm going to be doing that now yeah especially with things changing in the mcu uh like they plan on apparently there was talks of like, hey, let's just bring back all of the old Avengers and not have any questions and just yeah. make more Avengers movies with them. And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I heard like all those actors are like, I'm done. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? How do you like, what are you going to do? Give all of them Down Downey Jr. money? Like, like that's going to be <laughs> that crazy. That was their problem in the first place. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
the thing that's uh, here's the thing it, the mcu failing it's gonna be so hard right because you don't know if the mcu failed because the actors went away or because of poor management I I 100% believe it is poor management. Yeah. 100%. Because, yeah, the poor because if you if you don't think it's poor management, then you're saying once you let go of the original casts, you might as well reboot. You know what I mean? If people are not going to be able to keep moving on, um I think they handled it pretty poorly in the sense that you shouldn't have got rid of everybody all at the same time. You yeah. know, Endgame shouldn't have been the end game for every character, but it kind of was. And like you lost Scarlett Johansson, you lost uh, Chris Evans, you lost Downey Jr. You know, you lost so many of those people all at once when it should have been like, you know, you should have staggered it. Um, but I mean, it's kind of like that was the 10 years, right? That's kind of where everybody wanted to jump off. So I guess it makes somewhat sense. But yeah. I think business wise, you probably should have staggered them over time. Also, more of them should have died, in my opinion. You know, if they are going to go away. But like, yeah. Um, so I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, to kind of close that out, I do think Max is important, but not necessary to build the universe. Uh, moving on from that, we got Nick Cage's comments on AI versus CGI in Hollywood. Um, so I, this was funny because uh, he's making comments about how like, Oh, Tim Burton is scared of AI. I'm scared of AI. Everybody else should be scared of AI. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I thought people were joking around about this, but apparently this is a real thing. Uh, Joe Biden watched uh, Mission Impossible recently, <laughs> and he's like, oh, I AI is terrifying. I, I thought it was a too. joke. Yeah. And when I saw that it was real, I was like, that's actually pretty fucking funny. And he's actually implementing things to like tone down the uses of AI, which I yeah. think is wild. Yeah, um, that's funny. But in this conversation with Nicolas Cage, he brings up the difference uh, between AI and CGI um, in regards to his cameo in uh, in The Flash. Yeah. He said, that's not AI. I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. AI, for a lot of people who don't know, AI takes a reference of things that were and they repurpose them. Um, that's why a lot of people are very angry at uh, AI art because it steals from people's hardworking art and mm -hmm. creates it into its own thing. Um, and I thought this was a very interesting concept to how we can look at things in the future um, because you have controversies like that over at Disney and Star Wars with characters not being recasted being de-aged using ai voice modulators to make them sound younger um like the really big thing is uh was last year uh mark hamill worked with lucasfilm and, and disney to basically get a new actor to play him luke skywalker but they still cgi'd or ai'd his face to make yeah. him look like a young luke skywalker young mark hamill and people are just kind of creeped out about it. They're just like, this isn't right. Like, you should probably just recast the characters. Yeah. And so my question to you is, in this argument of AI versus CGI, like, is there a compromise when thinking about things in the future? So in my opinion, because we, we had differences of opinion when The Flash came out. I mm -hmm. was like, man that flash you know the 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 speed force and all of that was it looked horrible like seven yeah. years and they still couldn't finish a movie and you're like oh well it's an artistic thing and it came out that muse katie said yes it's an artistic thing flash sees things differently in the speed force and that's why it looks kind of wonky in my opinion the cameos could have 100 percent looked better mm -hmm. i think out of all of those because they spent more time on nicholas cage's scene his looked the best out of seeing Christopher Reeves. Uh, I, I forgot the actress who plays Supergirl in that mm -hmm. universe. But then everybody else's cameo. They all looked a little worse than Nicolas Cage's did. Like, yeah. I remember looking at Christopher Reeves on that big screen, and he literally looked 2D. Like, it mm -hmm. just looked awkward. So, do you expect us to... Uh, 
I say us, but I mean like WB, Hollywood, and everything else as, as the future of DC. We're eventually going to hit Crisis on Infinite Earths, in, yeah. in my opinion, when it comes to the DCU. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Not looking forward to it being like in the next five years or anything. I'm I'm thinking 10, 15 years, whatever. Uh, do you think that they will try to go the route of AI to do a Christopher Reeves to do a uh, Adam West and things like that? Or do you think they should go the full, like, hey, we're going to take time to CGI the body, AI the voice, and make them a walking, talking character? Or should we just kind of leave that stuff alone and just say, hey, they're not with us. It makes it awkward. Compromises mm-hmm. for pay is really weird with families and everything else and compensation. What do you think? What's your opinion on it? I think we do need a well. My brain tells me that we need to let people pass on and we need to bring in a new crop of people, right? But I also, you know, I saw Coco, I know how it goes. Like, you don't want people to be forgotten, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I like the honoring of the people that were kind of there before, but you don't need to do it as in like CGI models, right? Like you could have their just photo on the wall, you know, or something like that. Something where yeah. you're not faking it. Like, like the way they did with Stan Lee, right? Like they would put him on the wall in the background, like, yeah. you know, most wanted or something like that. Um, so I think do stuff like that. You don't need to forget the, the past, but you also don't need to try to bring them back through technology. Like, Aren't yeah. they still? I don't know if that movie's still in the works. The James Dean movie, where they're gonna like freaking. I have you know. yet to hear any update on that, but that was like the first big news of a like AI CGI character back from the dead type of thing, yeah. uh, and that's what made people worry about the future of movies. And it's just like, yeah, I mean, I I get it. I get why people are worried. So yeah. it's 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 gonna be odd. I. I I kind of think that they will do like especially because technology is only getting better. Like we are not digressing. You wouldn't know that with Marvel's movies, though. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't know that because like it still blows my mind how good Iron Man looks versus some of the modern day stuff. For real, though. You know, granted, I think Iron Man had more practical effects in it, but it did. Still. It, it did have a lot of practical stuff in it. Um, yeah. but the flying looked better. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it blew my mind how shitty that suit looks nowadays. Um, uh, it looks so the floating bad head and everything. Yeah, Yikes. it was just so weird. Um, but yeah, no, man, I think we do need to let the past kind of like you know let them be remembered for their past movies, not like oh yeah, look at this way we CGI them into this new one. Um, uh, because yeah, I think. It, I don't know, man. I think James Gunn has shown practical effects are always where it's at. I mean, Suicide Squad looked fucking great. And then where they they did use CGI, it's like, okay, the CGI looked pretty good, you know, for what it was. So I think we need to kind of not, um, you know. It's so weird, though, because, like, if you do do AI, right? I mean, it's going to really come down to if the movie makes money or not. I think if an AI movie comes out, people need to be like, we should all not go watch that. But you know, you can't do that for some people because in any group, there's always that one asshole. They'll be like, oh, everybody's going to do that. I'm going to go do this then. I'm going to go watch it. I'm going to go like it. You know? Yes, but it's also like for me, like the worst part of like people trying new things, especially mm-hmm. in a capacity of a movie where a lot of people can experience it, is me want, me thinking I got to see how it looks like yeah, I got to experience curiosity. This. curiosity. It's the, it's the curiosity that's that fair. gets to me. Yeah. And it's just like, damn it. Like, cause, cause it could go both ways. You could go mm-hmm. in and be like, Oh, that wasn't bad. Interesting. Whatever. Or yeah. you come out of it. Like I just wasted my fucking money on that. Like, I fuck. mean, you know, we did go watch blood sport. Um, so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I got Issa Gonzalez out of that. So I'm going to call it fair. <laughs> uh, but I will say this though. I do think it gets to the point if we're talking about AI here, you gotta, you have to make that personal moral decision of like, mm-hmm. if you want to see it, wait for it to be on streaming. Right. Yeah. Like that. I think that's kind of that one thing. 
Um, now, granted, I feel like some of us, I mean, Marvel kind of already fooled everybody with their AI opening until everybody found out and they're like, yo, what the fuck? You know yeah. what I mean? I think it's going to, somebody's going to come out and be like, oh yeah, half of the movie was done with AI. And then everybody's going to be like, what the hell? And that's going to be the catalyst to either be like, fuck you guys for tricking us or that didn't look too bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what's going to happen. See, but... I'm my thing is, I wonder because there's there's already been like you gave the example a while back of the AI beer commercial, right? Yeah. And then I went to go search for it later and I saw it and I was like, "Oh shit, that's terrifying." Yeah. And we know that right now SAG-AFTRA and the studios are deep into negotiations and things are kind of looking good but they're kind of not it's it's kind of all out there still you know mm -hmm. uh but i wonder because the fact that there is already stuff out there for ai and just like background stuff can studios use background ai and not get in trouble for it like use just like random civilians in a city and have them ai generated well yeah i'm assuming and because like star wars and all those people like when they do the stadium areas that's all cgi and like it's not real people i doubt they're exactly not for those people i would assume so yes but the problem is i think a lot of that stuff is also like maybe there was a stand-in already and then they just duplicate it so there was still somebody uh, originally. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, and yeah. I think that's what the actors are fighting for because they're saying, like, if Joe Schmo does the, like, look at me, I'm walking in the background of Marvel, uh, then they're going to be like, oh, we can use Joe Schmo for everything now and we can just put yeah. him anywhere we want. And that's what they're fighting against. So, yeah. because every time Joe Schmo has to do the same walking in every other movie, he's getting paid. Yeah. So I think that's what they're fighting for. And so, um, because yeah, if I if I remember correctly, the pod racing in Star Wars, the big scene where everybody's going crazy, I think it's all dupe. Like, there's a an actual section of real people, and then it's duplicated. And I think they changed the colors into. I think that's how oh, it was done. If I remember okay, okay, that okay. a long time ago, uh, but they kind of do that the same way. They usually uh, will get like a bunch of stormtroopers like in real suits, and then duplicate them in the background, so it looks like it goes farther and farther. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I've done that trick in Photoshop multiple times. So, like, I get it. It's very easy and very cool. But, you know, those people that were the entrance people should get paid, you know, and they For shouldn't sure. be able to do that every single time. Um, I can't really speak on too much stuff right now. But, like, at my job, we're doing, like, some new creative projects. And I'm working with artists back and forth right now. And I'm going to say telling an actual artist like hey this is our vision and then they come back and then they, they give me a sketch or something like that i'm like oh can we change this can we do that is actually kind of cool whereas it kind of sucks with the idea of like oh hey AI, i type this in and it gives me a photo i've seen a billion times just slightly different you know what i mean yeah. and um because i i did try the ai stuff out one like i am a very curious person and i was trying to create stuff with ai and like it, unless you start getting really good at prompts, like it's just kind of just art vomit, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah. like working with actual artists right now is pretty awesome. Cause I'm like, hey, can we get the face to be more like this or do this or can we change the colors? And they're like, yeah, sure. And they're changing it up. And, you know, it takes a day or two. But I like, I feel confident that somebody's being able to do, like they're getting paid to do something they love, right? Like I love that I was able to stream and stuff for a couple of months before i got panic attacks like that was really cool people were like oh yeah juice is streaming juice is dropping videos it's kind of rewarding to do something you you love you know what i mean yeah so i thought that was it's kind of cool working with these artists because i know like all right i'm putting food on the table with them you know so um you know and then again you have that human connection of going back and forth they've all been pretty nice which is awesome too so yeah, man, I don't know. AI, I think there's going to be, there will be things that can work for it. Like, here's the best example that I think is kind of okay, um, but people would argue against this too, is somebody was talking about how AI can write the bullshit NPC prompts in games. So, like, you know how NPCs always say the same damn dialogue? Yeah. And, like, there is a game, there's a game out there called Vaudeville. And people might hate it. People might not. It's an AI game 
that you have to talk to people to try to solve a mystery. And the AI, everything they talk back to you is all in real time. So like when you're talking to them, you're like, like say you're talking to a woman, right? And um, and you're trying to fight, figure out this mystery. I was watching this one streamer and he was all like, oh, there's some uh, big knockers you got there. And like he just said that to the AI and the AI was like, well, I think that's kind of inappropriate to kind of talk about that since we're supposed to be talking about the mystery that is going on, right? And I was just like, oh, shit. God damn. Yeah. So like the AI took that you made an inappropriate comment and talked about how it was inappropriate and then went back to the mystery. And I'm like, that's kind of scary, but also kind of awesome. So yeah. like, you know what I mean? But then it comes down to you didn't pay a voice actor for that. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just like, ah, oh, fuck. So are we, what I can see is maybe, maybe voice actors need to start going down the route of licensing their voice for a period of time. Ooh. You know what I mean? So like, hey, you're going to drop this game. Your game is going to be, have battle passes and stuff. So maybe I license my voice for six months. And then like any new content, you have to license again. Maybe yeah. it's something like that. I don't know. I don't know how it would work. I'm not in that industry, but maybe we get to how you got to pay Adobe every month if you want to use their suite collection. Maybe you got to start paying voice actors to use their voices. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that way they have a steady stream of income coming in and you can use their voice a billion times, but they're like, oh, I'm getting my money. So maybe that's what's got to be done. I don't know. So there's going to be a lot. Um, it would be funny. I think it would be so fucking funny if Joe Biden is the one that pushes AI restaurant because he got scared of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. Like that would be. It's so wild, man. It's wild. Uh, but moving on to, uh, I think these are two comic book things that are going on. We got mm -hmm. a comic in new manga size format. What is this? I literally just added this while you were talking okay, about I thought AI. So. I thought so. Um, because I literally just got this email uh -huh. from DC. DC announces DC Compact Comics. <laughs> Just call them manga. Like today, global pu publisher DC announced a new line in their graphic novel slate, DC Compact Comics, featuring a 5.5 inch by 8.5 inch standard book trim for trade paperback novels. The new format pulls best selling new reader friendly titles from DC's Evergreen Library as the first books offered in the new lineup of compact editions of adult graphic novels watchmen by alan moore okay. all-star superman by grant morrison and uh among others uh will go on sale beginning in june of 2024 retailing at a price of nine dollars and 99 cents us at launch for dc's new program and i immediately mm. start googling the standard <clears throat> comic book width and height mm -hmm. is 6.875 inches by 10.438 inches. And I went, okay, what is the manga standard? Five inches by 7.5 inches. Yeah. DC Compact Comics. So DC CPC yeah. is... Just, just call him manga, dude. Like, um, it's it's just so dumb. Like, I granted. Well, well compact is color? one word, so it it would be DC oh, CC. CC. Yeah. Uh, DC, is it gonna CC. be um? Are is it gonna be colored? Yeah. So, uh, I will uh, just show you here on the camera. Okay. They're gonna have from what it looks like, they're all colored. The uh, I don't see any of the interiors, but also, uh, it actually has a list of the first uh, wave of graphic novels. Mm -hmm. Watchmen, Batman, The Court of Owls, All-Star Superman, Far Sector, Wonder Woman, Earth One, American Vampire, Book One, Batman Hush, Joker, Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens, Catwoman, Trial of the Catwoman. Hmm. So a lot of Batman titles. Of course. Um, I, huh. I wonder if they'll start making them in, in this manga black and white. Like, you know, it'll be interesting. 
because because I don't think me, I want those books in that format. Personally, I I think that is that is solely catered to people that already collect manga, so they can fit with their manga collection. I think so as well. So I think this is not for the comic book collectors no. at large. Mm -hmm. These are for, and they said it in the email, new reader friendly. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going after. They're saying, hey, all of these manga readers are buying since sev 10, 17, 75, 215 volumes of one title. Mm -hmm. We need to get some of that money. Well, they're not going to read our comics because it's floppy and there's no place to put them. Let's yeah. make our graphic, our our famously, you know, best selling novels mm -hmm. in the same format. And there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I gonna hate lie, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. With me moving, I am keeping my floppies mm -hmm. in a storage unit here that my grandparents and brother are gonna take care of, mm -hmm. and I'm just taking my manga. Mm. So. If I want to like have those books for like research and stuff, yeah. granted I have DC Universe Infinite, but if I want them to fit nicely on a shelf with all my other manga, yeah, I might do it. I just I only really like DC Oversize, like Absolute, love it because they're coffee table books, and um, and the hardcovers are really nice. Yeah, yeah, I love those because you can just put those on a table and they look fantastic. But dude, I'm I'm looking at what I got right here. I have the uh, omnibuses. That size is already huge. Obviously, if you buy a deluxe version, those are slightly bigger than the normal regular volumes of graphic novels. And then, of course, hardcover versus trade paperback are different sizes. Like I've said this before, DC, pick a fucking size and stick to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like. If you wanna if you wanna make everything trade paperback or like you know you have a trade paperback and a hardcover, cool, do that. You know what? Maybe maybe the hardcovers are actually the collector's editions, and so you only maybe you pay a little bit more for hardcover. You obviously do already anyways, but you pay more for it, and maybe there's only a select number of them. You know what I mean? I don't know. Do something. Um, but like, I am very tired of having multiple. Like my this shelf over here is just fucking throw up. Like it's just all I have books stacked sideways and everything because they just don't fit. Um, where manga, I'm just like, dude, they stack perfectly any way I put them, like vertically, yes. horizontally. And, and I think that's the best thing about because I have always wondered, okay, how does everybody fit so many volumes of manga on their bookshelves when they're mm -hmm. collecting for quite some time? And I've seen TikToks of people putting them of course from left to right on a bookshelf mm -hmm. and then putting them vertically as well and it doesn't look bad at all it doesn't ruin the way your bookshelf looks yeah it just gives it a little bit more character and you're able to still read it no matter which way it lays mm -hmm. it looks great yeah and the one thing I, I noticed a lot of people do with manga because they are so much smaller is they double stack so what I mean is they have like they put like a little box behind the first layer of books yes. and then they stack them above and then they have the other one in front of that line. So you don't mm -hmm. ever see the little box that's that's heightening the other ones in the back and you can still see the numbers and everything. I've looked into those people who have 3D printers mm -hmm. are making bank off of manga collectors. Nice. That's all it is, is they is they just 3D print like a little shelf for mm -hmm. your bookshelf. And that's what they use. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that is clearly just to get into the manga market. Uh, DC just needs to, in that kind of format, create a new Batman and be like, look, we're going to pay somebody to do the first, like, 100 volumes of Batman. And just do that. And then just pay, your, like, you pick one, pick one fucking guy and be like, yo, Tom King. Or, hey, Scott Snyder. Whoever you're going to pick. We need a manga line gotta bring it out or maybe you don't even pick somebody maybe you get a new blood that knows how to do manga and you go there i will say though the one thing that is really going to get a lot of these people to buy it is that nine dollars and 99 cent price tag yeah because there's well, a lot of these books there, 
they have to to be able to compromise for what the manga readers are used to mm -hmm. manga readers whenever you look at any manga the price tag goes from 499 to 1699 mm -hmm. that is really the 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 range yeah. uh and the 1699 goes with the hardcover books for manga mm -hmm. volumes whereas the 499 is sometimes usually like uh i would say anything after the first volume the first volume is they usually try to get you with that 999 which is totally fine and then everything else is a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. i think to compromise and stick with because you're still with the size people are like okay i don't want to spend a shit ton of money so ten dollars is kind of in that range when you look at a a type like look at these titles all-star superman batman hush you can go to amazon right now and look for these titles they're still going to be anywhere from 15 20 24 yeah. 99 the 9.99 price tag is really is what's going to sell people yeah my problem is we read stuff digitally now well like for the podcast at least what are how is that compact format gonna look on a page where tom king has a bunch of text Hmm. you know what i mean because it's you're, true you're my, my thing also my thing also would be do these compact editions it's it would be odd if they did this but maybe they're dumb enough to try it are these compact editions getting a digital version because so. the and, and the reason why i say that is because some of these books aren't collected in their completed format mm -hmm. digitally. Yeah, true. How is Watchmen going to be in a compact format? Nine panel grid. I I need to see it. Like, I yeah. definitely need to see this. Um, I do think it's a smart move, but I just think it's funny. We have been clamming for this. We, yeah. We've been clamoring for this. We've been yelling at DC, hey, just do it. Just rip the Band-Aid off and make the change. And they're slowly doing it. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see. I think they need to come out with new series in it, though. You know what I mean? Uh, I think well, it I, for a while. I think it's smart to go with the most popular titles. Yeah, fair. Because let's looking at the titles now watchmen of course a very strong political story that mm -hmm. everybody talks about well they have to do that so they can never give this stuff back to alan moore exactly so. all-star superman the inspiration to what is going to be superman legacy for james gunn's dcu it already sold out buku's when the dc slate was announced mm -hmm. batman hush Hush is rumored to be the villain of Matt Reeves' The Batman Part 2. So is Clayface, which is weird. Uh, uh, Wonder Woman Year One, like, we're going to be getting a new Wonder Woman. Year One sounds like, hey, this could be a very easy sell on paper. Mm -hmm. Joker, of course, is Joker. Like, I, I think this is a solid lineup for hey, look at our new but old shiny things, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. That's all we can really do, right? Um, but let's move on to the next topic, which is DC's Beast World to change the, D the, change the status quo of the DC universe. I have no idea what the fuck this is. Yes, so uh, Beast World is going to be Tom Taylor's event coming mm -hmm. out very, very soon. Oh, um, no. And... The reason why I, I clicked this, of course, our, our old uh, uh, DC, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, 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 I have no idea what you're trying to say. The, the person who used to give us the books. Oh, they, our contact, I guess. Our contact, yes. They posted this, and I'm like, okay, I need to read this. Let's Because the big clickbaity thing about this is... It's going to change the status quo of the DC universe as we uh -huh. know it. Of course it is. And that's the usual statement. Like, yeah, sure, whatever. Well, Tom Taylor within it, within himself in this article 
talks about that. So they asked him, Tom, as we get closer to 2024, can you tease about the Titans Beast World impact on the wider DCU moving forward? And he says, here's the thing. You often hear with an event, the DC universe will never be the same again. And you go, okay, sure. That sounds likely. In this case, I can actually tell you the DC universe will never be the same again because it sets up a new status quo for the DC universe. This is something that we've been discussing for a very long time. Places where we wanted to go, pieces on the board, players to be in the positions that they've never been before. I've been in talks with people. Uh, wait, I've been in talk. I've been talking to people about where we want to position people like Amanda Waller for well over a year, talking to Joshua Williamson and editors uh, like uh, Ben Ampernanthi and Jess Chen. We've been wanting to change things quite fundamentally. At the end of this, the DC Universe does look a little different. And people who don't know about this, Beast World is going to be an event that takes place because in order to save the world from a like catastrophic event, Garfield, mm -hmm. Beast Boy, needs to turn into Starro. He turns into a giant Starro, mm -hmm. the, and they call him Garo, um, and he saves the world. But in doing so, he gets hurt in the process, and because he is Starro at the time, when he gets hurt, a defense mechanism of Starro is to like unleash spores or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, Garfield, Beast Boy, accidentally releases these spores, and these spores attach onto beings on Earth and transforms them into different animals. So it gives them a piece of Beast Boy's DNA to basically transform into animals. Um, so we're going to randomly see just random people on the DC Universe Earth transform. Um, one of the pictures here has uh, Black Adam turn into an ape. Um, we oh, see... so it's going to be all heroes. They're just going to get converted back. We, we, that's it. Da -da -ding, bada -boom. I'm sure, but my thing is, what exactly does it mean by the status quo of the world of DC is going to change? We know from the announcement of Dawn of DC mm -hmm. that the Titans were supposed to be taking place of the Justice League, right? Yeah. And more so, Nightwing was supposed to be the leader of the Justice League. And so a lot of people have been saying, like, oh, he's not really going to be the leader of the Justice League. He's just the leader of the Titans, and they're taking the place of the Justice League for now. Is this event going to solidify Nightwing even more as a leader of a potential Justice League in the future? Do you think that's what the status quo is going to be? Because Tom Taylor is writing Nightwing. Mm -hmm. This is a... Apparently, I didn't know this also, reading this article, this is apparently the first Titans event in all of DC Comics. Hmm. I mean, have you got Nightwing involved? You got apes. I mean, he's really good with apes. We know that. Ooh. Maybe that's the status quo. <laughs> Maybe there's a bestiality kink going on in this world now. I don't really know. Oh, um, I don't fucking care. That's what I can say. Um, <laughs> the Titans book, I haven't really cared about. I haven't been reading it. I've only been reading the um, uh, World's Finest version. Yeah, or, you know, because that one's fun. It's kind of crazy. It's out there. I just Tom Taylor never sticks to landing. It's very rare. So why at this point would I care about an event he's running? You know what I mean? Well, when was the, the only last time difference to landing. Well, and that was the thing in this article. Uh, he talks about how like, oh, I've done very dramatic things with injustice, with Dark Knights of Steel, with deceased, and apparently. DC came to him and said, hey, we need you to do it in continuity. Yeah. And he reacted in a way that's like, hey, usually when you jump onto these books, DC tells you, hey, these are our shiny toys. Don't mm -hmm. break our shiny toys. And he's like, they're giving me permission to break their shiny toys. So Tom Taylor 
I will admit, although I love him as a writer, he does do things in those very solidified non-canon books for the shock value. Mm -hmm. I'm a little worried that there's going to be a lot of shock value in this Beast World event. And then it, like you said, oh, everything's going to change and, 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 and be, quote unquote, back to normal by the end yeah. of it. I would hate that. I would absolutely I, hate that. He just showed me that's his MO in in Dark Knights of Steel. Nobody can be villains. Like everybody's gonna do the same things. Heroes are gonna prevail. Like, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. That was the one book you could go against the heroes in. And yeah. like he fucking still did the status quo. And so I just don't think that they're gonna switch anything, or if anything, it's gonna get all retconned in the next year. You know, all yeah. all that's gonna happen is gonna it's gonna be a uh, Goku at the end of D Super when people are gonna be like, yeah. So why don't you change into an ape? And he's like, I don't know. I just can't do it anymore. Like it's just you know that's what's gonna be. <laughs> that's what's gonna be. Which it's fair. I understand that why Goku can't do it, but that I feel like it's gonna be stupid in comics. You know when that happens too. You yeah. Know? Um, because like it's gonna happen to multiple people, not just one character. So, like, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, seeing this on Twitter right now, posted eight minutes ago from Discussing Film, The Penguin has been delayed to fall 2024 due to studios refusing to pay their actors family fairly. Wow. So, a whole year they're going to wait to post that. So, does that mean that The Batman is going to get delayed a year, too? From its original standpoint, because well, so here's here's the thing that I never really took into consideration, and the reason why so many people are kind of worried for this whole SAG after uh studios negotiations thing, they need to come up with a deal mm -hmm. basically by the end of next week, and the reason why is Hollywood literally goes on christmas vacation oh they like there's no productions going on during the end of november and all of december hmm. so there was an article a while back talking about how if they don't come up with a deal then everything and and we've talked about it how everything is going to be pushed a whole calendar year yeah. And this could very much be the start of it. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that either. I'm surprised Hollywood doesn't work during those days. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's kind of uh that's news there. Um but I heard that Penguin takes place right after the Batman, so you have to have that come out before Batman yeah. 2. So anyways, sucks for Batman 2 fans. Um, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so that's uh yeah, I don't know. The the you know uh, I don't care really about the Beast World stuff and you know, Penguin, uh, I'll watch it when it comes out, which is not gonna be until 2025, it seems like now. Um, probably like mid-2025, which is crazy when you'll be getting the new DCU. We still don't know how finished Penguin is because remember that first trailer was actually like an a production trailer also. Yeah, because they actually showed like people in the background like filming and and doing the production stuff. So we actually don't know how far along that show is. Yeah, I don't know, man. But uh, let's move on to viewer questions. Uh, we got Raphael first in the Discord that says. Do you think Zadarsky will have any arc that could be relatively interesting? I was going to ask if his run has any salvation, but I think I already asked that. Um, I mean, we will be talking about Zadarsky later on because it's the only book we have in, in comics this week. But is there any arc that could be relatively interesting? Yeah, I mean, you can't necessarily say no because anything's possible. You know, I yeah. So for me, I will. Uh, we have always said that we will give anybody that is writing Batman the benefit of the doubt first and go in with a grain of salt and always hope for the best. Yes, we will always do that because we love Batman. Chip Zdarsky has not impressed us whatsoever. Mm -mm. And I will go all the way back 
to Bendis on Superman. I was ecstatic from Bendis on Superman because I was not very much informed of everything that was going on at Marvel. Apparently, Marvel was trying to kick him out the door near the tail end of his career over there. Mm -hmm. And I still just remembered him from Ultimate Spider-Man, which was one of my favorite runs, if not my favorite run of Spider-Man. So him being on Superman was a total shit show. Mm -hmm. I had Juice uh, on one of my podcasts reviewing Superman. And then almost three months later, Juice came on again to talk about Superman. And Juice was like, is this the very next issue? Was it delayed for three months? Because literally (laughs) this is kind of like the same thing that was happening in the last issue. I'm like, no. It's been three months. There's been three other, three or four other comics, and nothing has happened. And it was shit. But there was literally one comic. The worst thing that happened in Superman was him sharing his identity. I absolutely hate it. But there was literally one page of that story of Superman sharing his identity with Perry White and Jimmy Olsen. And it was one of the most perfect things ever written slash drawn because there was no dialogue it was just all a silent page and it was perfect it was awesome i love that page somebody like bendis that i absolutely hated at one point called him literal cancer for dc comics (laughs) yeah created one of the perfect pages in comics that i've ever seen yeah so can chip do something for batman probably Am I looking forward to it? And am I am I expecting it? No. Yeah. So I I think he because again, we talk about it all the time. I introduced Chip's Daredevil to Juice, and he mm-hmm. even loved it for the first volume. It was yeah. awesome. Chip has the ability to be a good writer. I think that he's just gone a little overboard with the oh, I can do anything because I'm Chip Sadarsky with Batman. Yeah. I also think Chip thinks he's writing an epic the way King did, and it's not yeah. anywhere close. It's not even on the level. He's yeah. not even sniffing it. The order hasn't even been placed yet. Like, he is just not close. Like, yeah. it's just, I don't know, man. Because to say his own writing contradicts itself. How the yeah. fuck is Zurin Ross still around? <laughs> I don't know, man. You know? <laughs> I and don't know. Zurin Raw hasn't even been in the last two issues of Gotham War. But he just magically showed up again. Like, I, I just don't understand it. Maybe this is the reason why King was like, yeah, I don't fuck with everybody else's book. I only mess with my own. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he was like, I'm just going to tell my story. Um, and like, I don't really know. I think that was kind of crazy. Granted, he did end up fucking with Nightwing's book. But still. Um, I. I have no hope, but I won't say that he it can't happen because I think anything is possible. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it is what I'll say. So uh, going from here, Arwitz says out of all Batman's rogues in a fight to the death, who is coming at first, second and third? I mean, okay. all of them. So I looked into this mm-hmm. and he said out of all. All of the Batman drugs. And I was like, okay, I can't look at all of the Batman drugs. So I went to the trusty uh, Batman rogues gallery uh, wiki fandom or whatever it's called. And I looked and of course they have all of the characters that are like, of course, his big bats. There's the Joker. Mm -hmm. There's Raza Ghoul, there's Bane, there's Ivy, there's they had Catwoman and uh oh who was another one? Uh, let me actually bring Harley it up Quinn? real quick. Uh they actually didn't have uh Harley Quinn in there. That's weird. Uh they had Prometheus. I was like, Prometheus oh. hasn't been a Batman villain for years. Yeah. He hasn't really been anything as fo- like done anything with Batman as far as like in yeah. his main line of comics. I mean, he was in King's Batman. book though. So when he's the reason Batman dies. 
Remember, they have that issue. Dr. Prometheus, the guy that's like all radioactive, right? No, no, no. You're thinking of Dr. Phosphorus. I'm, oh, I'm talking about Prometheus. Yeah, yeah, Prometheus yeah. is yeah, yeah. Uh, the purple knight looking dude. Oh, um, yeah, I guess. I don't. I can't really say. All right. Yeah, so I, I, I got the list. So uh, Hugo Strange, the Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, Two-Face, Scarecrow, Riddler, Freeze, Mad Hatter, Poison Ivy, Ra's al Ghul, Bane, Deadshot, Firefly, Clayface, Black Mask, KG Beast, Prometheus, and Hush are said to be the primary antagonists of Batman. Mm -hmm. via this page and so i was like okay you could probably of course for sure take out catwoman and you could take out prometheus mm -hmm. those are the easiest two to take out that's no holds bar so i went row by row and i was like okay let's see hugo strange joker and the penguin i think the joker has that in the bag mm -hmm. right yeah okay two-faced scarecrow riddler freeze this was a little bit harder because i feel like they're kind of on the same level but the question was to the fight of the death. Who would be willing to kill more than anything? And I kind of have to think that Two-Face would. Two-Face. Here's the well, thing. I, so, because you're going row by row. So you're, you're. I, I'm, like I'm a, kind of, I'm taking out all of the, I'm, yeah. I'm getting the big guys up top and then ultimately having them fight and be like, okay, who would be on yeah. top of that? But my thing is, I because it it all depends on are we doing a tournament style or a brawl? Because he's saying one, two, and three. I don't know if that's a tournament style. That's very different because there's so much randomness that can go in a tournament style. I'm thinking it's a brawl. Who are the final three? Yeah, battle royale. Yeah, like they all jump into an island. I and... think Freeze is surviving. He's freezing everybody. Like he's just shooting people. Okay. I think Clayface is surviving. Because he's he can just put a little spot off of him. He can go in people's mouths and kill him if he wants to, if he really wants to. True. And then thirdly, I don't want to just sit here and say Joker, but like Joker has just been he's so OP and the stuff he's done. So like you'd you'd go with him, but if I'm not including Joker, let's just say Joker is distracted, he gets beat, or he doesn't even care. I don't really know. The last person I'm going with. Because, like, something would tell me that all the other rogues have a way to counteract Scarecrow and his fear gas. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like Scarecrow is not that threatening. Penguin's not that threatening, even though King is writing a really great book about him right now. I, what were the other top ones? I feel like it's people that use stuff to their advantage that are going to be... Deadshot? KG Beast? Uh... I think Deadshot... Or not... Uh... KGB's over Deadshot. I think Deadshot's probably a better marksman than KGB's, but KGB's... Hush is in here too. No, I don't Mad Hatter. No, Mad Hatter, no. Um, Ivy? Yeah, I'd go Ivy. I think su the supernatural being able to twist and bend stuff, like, because here's the thing. I think Clayface, if I'm Clayface, right, like, you can think of everything to get rid of your body. If I know I'm about to get hit by Freeze's ray gun, I force Clay into the ground. And yeah. so I don't get frozen there. If you're Ivy, same thing, right? So, like, you can just have vines and just, like, you can have vines, like, break out the ice, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and so I think they're just too, I mean, Ivy is ultra OP. Like, we know that. So I think it's Ivy, Freeze, Clayface. Uh, now, uh, who's one, two, and three? Ivy's my number one. And then if Clayface is smart, like I would hope he would be, he would be two, and then Freeze would be three. But I think you can swap two and three. I think, and I I literally kind of had like a tournament-style mm -hmm. battle royale kind of in the mix of everything, is Ivy, Ra's al Ghul, and Joker. Mm. I mean, I think if you were to go based off comics and stuff they've done, mm -hmm. I could see that list. Yeah. Um, because Race and Joker are just insane. Like they've come back from so much. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think Battle Royale style, the thing is, nobody's just ever written like Freeze and Clayface to be those ultra crazy villains. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's kind of how it is. It's also too, Clayface can be anybody. 
Yeah. So, you know, he could pretend to be Joker and then, oh, you know, or do whatever he needs to do. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I would be uh, very, because like if I'm Clayface, because like, you think some people are going to join alliances, right? Like Two Face is going to join up with Penguin or something, right? So, like if you're Clayface, you low key wait, you have them kill a lot of people, and then you kill one of them and turn into them and be like, all right, where are we going next, Penguin? And then kill Penguin. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, very... Like you could even fake being one of, like, being a dead Penguin, you yeah. know? Being on the ground so that way people run up to you and be like, oh, he's already dead. And then yeah. they run away, and Clayface is like, whew, you know, yeah. got out of that one scot free and then yeah, run somewhere else. Like, Clayface can harden his body, right? So mm -hmm. you never really see Clayface like throwing clay, like as spears and stuff, you know? Like, he could be extremely violent. It's always like a hammer or something or suffocating yeah. people. So. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I would go with um, Ivy Clayface Freeze in my in, in my. But moving on, we got uh, King that says, "I don't know if I still have time, but should Darkseid still be the main villain slash Thanos level in the DCU?" Yeah, why not? I don't. See I why think not. so. Uh, I looked at other people's ideas of like big bads Thanos level. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still think Brainiac has the capacity to do so. Yeah, um, he's ultimately still a superman villain um dark side is a multiversal justice league villain yeah. he's not a superman villain he's not a batman villain he's not a wonder woman villain he is a multiversal villain mm -hmm. um some people are saying the batman who laughs god no yeah no. um i i feel like we are going to see him though in the dcu like it's yeah. gonna be it's it, probably gonna it's, be in the suicide squad game for all we know Oh, probably. You know, um, if that game ever comes out. <laughs> that's true, too. <laughs> you know? Oh, um, man. But yeah, it, he should be. Um, moving on to uh, the stuff we got over here on YouTube. We only got about five. Uh, Eduardo de la Cruz says, uh, Joker, knock, knock. Batman, who's there? Not your parents. Uh, who would you, but rather, who would win? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. Uh, well, we kind of just had this conversation. Penguin versus Two-Face versus Black Mask. Uh, Ventriloquist versus Chucky. Michael Lane versus Michael Myers. Michael Lane. Who's that? Um, Michael Lane. Let's, like, let's look. Michael uh, Lane. Uh, dude, Chucky doesn't die, though. So I think Chucky's going to beat Ventriloquist. Um, Penguin versus Two Face versus Black Mask. I think anybody can win that match, to be honest. Ah, uh, so Michael Lane is a uh, Asriel. Oh, yeah, it says here Michael Lane is an anti hero character appearing in American comic book published by DC Comics. He debuted in Batman 665 as a super villain, Bat Devil before later taking on the identity of Azrael, being the second character to do so after John Paul Valley. I hate um, seconds, you know? So uh, <laughs> I'm going to go Michael Myers there, because he's the original. I think Chucky beats Ventriloquist, because he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Penguin Two-Face versus Black Mask, I'll take any of them. I think they could all win. Yeah, I think they all have a fair chance to to win that fight. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next question, we got Clay that says, what new DCU casting would get the biggest eye roll from the audience? Henry Cavill as Cyborg Superman, Ben Affleck as Jim Gordon, Gal Gadot as Zatanna, Ezra Miller as Reverse Flash, Chris Evans as Aquaman. Um, Henry Cavill versus Cyborg Superman, I think. Oh, no, I think Miller as Flash, as Reverse Flash. It's his biggest eye roll. I, yeah, I, I genuinely... I genuinely think if they did the reveal perfectly mm -hmm. for Cyborg Superman and you realize it's Henry Cavill, people would be like, oh, shit. Whereas because of all of the unfortunate controversy with Miller, yeah, when you see him come out as reverse flash, people are like, oh, geez, of course he is. Yeah, I guess you're, you're right. You're right. I, I, I would go with that. Um, I just think like Cyborg Superman. I guess I was thinking about people being like, "Oh, he could be Cyborg Superman, but not Superman." You oh, know? I, I, you are definitely getting both of those versions. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting the people that are hyped, people who are, are are talking all that shit, and people are doing the exact same thing with the Miller. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, he he couldn't be Flash, but now he could be Reverse Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. 
Uh, Jason Todd says, what Batman baddie would you rather fist fight? Um, Zaz, Scarecrow, Ventriloquist, or Penguin? You know, before finishing that, when he used baddie, I was thinking it was going to be women. <laughs> that's like, exactly I feel like what I thought. <laughs> that's the terminology nowadays. Yeah. Um, but who am I fist fighting out of here? I'm probably fist fighting Ventriloquist. To be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, because Scarecrow, I mean, actually, I, Scarecrow kind of a bitch behind the gas, right? So, well, that's what that's what I was thinking. I, he's a lanky character. Yeah, I think that uh, that you could very much beat him. But Jarellaquist, he's good with his hands. He, fair, he controls fair. Scarface, like you know. Mm. And Penguin, I'll tell you this. Short people, when it comes to boxing, they have the upper hand. Yeah. They just do. I hate it. But, I, hate I mean, it. how short, though? Can I kick them? And I'm like, woo. Because um, here's the thing. Like, I think I have to go with Scarecrow because I am a skinny person myself. And I've told this story on my stream before. But, like, I was a very, like, calm person going through high school. Or middle school, I should say. And uh, that's kind of when I learned to start standing up for myself. And I used to play basketball. And there was this short pretty boy kid in my class that played basketball with me and he he was throwing the bat we were doing drills through the legs and uh he threw a basketball at me one time and i was like yo chill it and he was like laughing he made everybody else laugh and our coach left the thing and he did it again and i was like fuck this and i went over to him grabbed him behind his arms in like a full nelson i think it's a full nelson or whatever basically where he couldn't move he's like doing the t pose and i spun him around and threw him a, it felt like i threw him across the court and like he was like, oh, and then fucking he got up all mad. He's like, what's up, man? What's up? And uh, after that day, never messed with me again because he was like, oh, this guy can chunk me. And like, uh, coach had showed up right when anything was going to happen. And like, yeah, like, dude, never mess with me again after he saw that I could launch him. So uh, I'd probably go with Scarecrow just because, you know, he's lanky. Maybe I could do the same thing. But um, and then maybe he'll be, maybe I'll be what he he's fearing. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's juice, no. uh but anyways yeah so uh nathan says what new batman title are you most likely to pick up just based on the title batman into the bat verse no uh red hood the age of magic another no dc what if nightwing new blue lantern those are all i don't care dc what I, if dc what if is elseworld like yeah. uh, that's all it is uh I think people would pick it up for the curiosity, but like, why when you yeah. have Elseworld there? Um, Red Hood, The Age of Magic, I think it's very funny because uh, while you guys are watching this on YouTube, you should be seeing my new game, uh, new game plus uh, gameplay of Gotham Knights, where mm. I'm playing as Jason Todd, where they made him a metahuman uh, with yeah. like Lazarus powers and stuff, and I don't like it. Yeah. It's so stupid. Um, it just doesn't make sense for the character. Um, I, I I don't like the idea of Red Hood being that supernatural. I get the idea of him getting resurrected by the Lazarus Pit, but that's where it stops. You know, mm -hmm. that's where it should stop. Um, and this, just because I'm a huge Nightwing fan, uh, New Blue Lantern is quite possibly the title that I would be picking. Um, Into the Batverse sounds like it should be a Lego story yeah um new blue lantern what is blue lantern isn't that sadness or something what i don't what is the blue no lantern it's hope oh yeah yeah i i'm just like uh isn't sadness in the elemental movie or what is it feelings movie uh, is it? uh it's one? uh <laughs> the emotion one inside yeah inside there you go I just, I'm like, oh, blue means sad i was like that's just kind of takes it over <laughs> uh which a uh, sad nightwing I mean, I guess we already read Rick Grayson, so I guess that was sad. Nightwing. Exactly. Um, moving on from that, I think uh, we have Moncre, uh, who says, how would Batman handle Deadpool, Rick Sanchez, and Walter White slash Jesse Pinkman if they existed in Gotham? Um, I mean, Batman deals with, like, I know everybody's, like, super, got a super hard on for Breaking Bad. Those are low-level villains for Batman. They are low-level, but I will say this. Walter White goes from like the lowest tier on mm -hmm. Batman's list to quite possibly one of the highest tier. 
Like, yeah, I guess just the just the way Walter White evolves as a character. Like, there is a reason why people say Walter White is not the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. Like, he is definitely not. Yeah, and at the end, he's not a good guy. He never was a good guy. He was always a selfish prick. That was like, hey, he started off being like, hey, I'm gonna make all this money for when I die. But mm -hmm. once he found out he's not dying, it's like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to do this. Of course, like I'm not going to spoil the ending of Breaking Bad, whoever, you know, hasn't seen it yet. But I think the evolution of that character mm -hmm. could definitely be a thorn in Batman's side. True, but I don't I just don't think he's like going to be more dangerous. I mean, if you put him on the level of like Two-Face or Penguin, then yeah. we've seen Batman handle them pretty easily. So it'd be the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's something that Batman would have to really think about. He's more like, how do I destroy his their chains of command? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of what I see. Because, like, Walter White, I mean, I, obviously, I don't want to spoil the show either, although it's been out fucking forever. Um, he gets his hands dirty, what, maybe like a handful of times? Like, like yeah. him actual himself, you know? So, um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he's on the lines of, like, them. Rick Sanchez or... I don't know that, right? I mean, I know Sanchez names, but like, I don't, is this a particular character from a particular show? Cause if so, I don't think I've seen it. Um, and Deadpool, if Batman knows Deadpool can't die, I could see Batman. Um, like, well, Rick Sanchez is, I believe from Rick and Morty. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, Rick's Latino. <laughs> 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 um uh, fuck i mean do you think rick would even have a problem with that i feel like rick is so weird he's like a batmite type character he is a batmite character but like he says f it to all the laws of mankind and Fair. that's a problem for batman you yeah. know because if he ends up falling into gotham for some reason and messing shit up Batman's going to be there to be like, hey, I'm going to stop you. Yeah. And Rick's like, hey, Batman, fuck you. And just yeah. go about his business. And that's a it, problem. It might be one of those situations where this is the one of the rare times Batman does call parts of the Justice League. Yeah. Um, because you probably need like a cyborg at least to portal jump. Yeah. So um, probably that. Deadpool, honestly, there's a super power beatdown about this. And um, he blows him up. And he's like, oh, I know you can live, so you'll you'll be back. I think Batman would just explode him every time. He's like, you're not going to die. So, like... <laughs> I mean, it's smart. <laughs> yeah, because then you don't have to deal with him well, for a while while he grows back. It's yeah. Like, oh, you know, just explode him. So, I that's think that smart. would be how it goes. But that's all we got for questions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we're going to move on to our only book of the week. And it is The Ending of gotham war the great gotham war that will be talked about for the next hundred years um i'm glad this fucking thing's over this was so is, stupid first of all art lame um did not like the art in this book um but the book itself the dialogue what happened it why even make this this was such a crappy book. I know people are going to be... Uh, oh, my God. I'm getting all these damn texts from the start. What the fuck? Sorry. Here's the one thing I hate about Apple. Um, their iPads don't have certain features that the fucking phones do sometimes. I think it's stupid. Uh, anyways, um, I... I think a lot of people are going to see the cover of this and they're going to be like, oh, my God, Batman and Catwoman exploding. Did you <laughs> before we read this, did you see what um, Raphael had posted in the new in the uh, manga section about um, Teeny Howard? Yes. OK, uh, I was actually uh, having a conversation with him about it. Okay. Uh, this is stupid. Um, yeah. Her her idea of like, oh, people don't realize how much really happens in between the panels. I'm like, no, you just don't know how fucking pedal progression fucking yeah. works in a comic. Yeah. She basically <laughs> said like, oh yeah, you, a lot of the stuff you don't think happens in my story happens between the panels. And it's like, oh, so you want me to headcanon everything. 
because you're not a great writer. That is so stupid. Yeah. So dumb. Like, oh, I want you to do more legwork so I don't have to write the story. Yeah. Is essentially what she's saying. Uh, here's one thing. Because I know this happens in human nature. And there are some people that are a little bit more stern. I feel like I am a more stern person that will be like, no, this needs to get done. This needs to be said. And there are other people that will try to skirt around things and be like, oh, no, that that's fine. You know what I mean? I want to know if Teeny Howard and other writers out there write a certain way where they try to put a lot of information in one big panel so their artist doesn't have to do a lot more work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Tom King's like 16 page panel. Here's all my dialogue. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't yeah. care. Like he's like, you're the artist. We're going to tell the best story possible. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, granted, King does let artists be artists. He's like, this is what happens in the panel. Draw it the way you want. You know what I mean? Um, whereas Howard, there's just like the characters are so weird. But some of these panels are like, you know, square box with like Batman stares at Jason Todd. Jason Todd eyes. Like it's just, I don't know. The panel book, granted, I don't know if this is Howard or Zadarsky because they're working together. Who does the panel progressions here? Is every time Catwoman's in there, is that Howard? Is every time on Batman's by himself, is that Zadarsky? Like, I don't know how these dual books work. Yeah. And and listeners, the the whole thing around this conversation that we're having is this idea that somebody on her substack, Teeny Howard Substack, yes, said, Hey, you said Batman and Catwoman are gonna kiss. I need this to happen because I'm a bat cat fan. Mm -hmm. I need this relationship to mean something other than with within just the fandom and then teeny howard proceeded to be like oh of course they kiss like yeah it was from the moment their lips were really close together but not touching to the moment of them actually moving away from each other uh it meant that they had sex yeah what yeah like and even even uh and i've had Raphael, sex with a lot of people that's all i'm gonna say and, and, but, but Raphael yeah. was like, it's one thing to like have them like almost kiss, and then the very next panel, like them putting on clothes, yes, to say like, okay, like something happened from one panel to the next. Mm -hmm. But literally, I I shared the screenshot. If you look at the panel of Catwoman saying, "Uh, cities on fire." And then the very next panel is Batman sitting up and talking. It yeah. literally just looks like Batman pushed her out of the way and be like, my city's in danger. Yeah. Like, that's literally what it looks like. Like, you can't say like, oh, yeah, that's that. They definitely had sex between the two of those panels. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, first of all, I mean, if you want to see the best, I mean, the way Batman and Catwoman would probably go at it, go read Catwoman's first issue of New 52. Or it might be the second issue, where they, like, super no, it's the get first. it on. It's it is the, the first. first they super get it on in that book. <clears throat> but here's the thing. The reason why she said she didn't show it, and I'm losing my voice right now, um, is because they were like, yeah, somebody told me it's not a good look that they're getting it on while the city's exploding. That still happened. They were talking while it was exploding. That was one of our biggest reasons we hated the last book. Yeah. They were watching these explosions go off and just having this like, ah, oh, we can't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you still made them look stupid. So, like, you might as well have had them bang it out while the city is blowing up because you already made them look dumb. Just go full blown. Um, I don't know. Really dumb. So, Howard just... Uh, I want her off the book. I want Zdarsky off the book. I want new people to come in here so I can at least hate somebody new. You know what I mean? If they're doing bad. I'm tired of complaining about the same writers. But let's talk about this book because I feel like this event was just made up in a few hours. And they were just like, uh, Gotham War. Uh, Catwoman versus Batman. And uh, uh, there's a reason they fight. And then uh, villains come up and they got Batman stuff and then they fight the family and uh, Catwoman uh, something happens to her and she has to leave Gotham. That's what I feel like 
this was done yeah. because nothing happens in this book. Not only that, again, talking about how like uh, Taylor was doing stuff for like shock value and everything. Mm -hmm. This whole thing with Red Hood is so stupid because Red Hood ends up quote unquote sacrificing himself without sacrificing himself mm -hmm. and then it just never comes up again like his his like whatever is happening to red hood after the fact nothing yeah. happened like no, you don't see him again after this whole thing with him like landing after he crashes into a giant meteor which by the way this whole fucking story about this fucking meteor is so ridiculous and stupid. Yes, like, I agree. Chip Zdarsky and Teeny Howard literally think they're writing for the 1940s. Mm -hmm. Like, this sounds like something that should be in a Golden Age comic. Yeah. And I, I remember saying this, that, like, I, I don't remember if it was Bendis or Wade. I think it was Wade because of the way he writes World's Finest. He writes it in a capacity that he remembers comic books being. But Wade is able to do it in a modern way that makes it also fun for this modern age. He's able to do the wacky stuff of the Silver Age and Golden Age of comics, but still make it relevant for modern readers. Mm -hmm. Chip Sardarsky okay. and Teeny Howard, here in this story, they come up with these like fragments, which, by the way, I feel like the fragments were literally introduced in this book mm -hmm. and then concluded in this book. Like there, there has been nothing coherent about this Gotham war whatsoever. Yeah. So, I mean, we can go through here. I think we're just going to, instead of reviewing the book, because I feel like nothing really happened in the book, we'll just pick off points and talk about it. Cause you kind of just rammed off a lot. But yeah. I want to talk about this this tweet I saw because I feel like we just kind of we're, we're saying nothing really happens here. Right. But there's a, a really popular comic book creator or uh, not creator reviewer slash YouTuber called Comic Storian. Right. A lot of people know Comic Storian. They they watch his videos because they can't afford to read books or whatever. Like, I think he does some good stuff. Um, not a, I, I've said this a million times as a comic book somebody that works in the comic book space on YouTube. I don't watch other comic book people because I don't want cross. Um, what do they call it? Like you ideas. don't, you don't want your, your opinion swayed. Yes. Yes. So I don't watch other people. And some people are like, what? that's kind of weird. I'm like, no, I think it's, it's fair. I think a lot of people do this to be honest. Um, but I don't go around watching other comic creators, but I don't know for whatever reason, this is the first time I've ever seen comic story on my timeline. And it was about this book. And so before I even read this book, I read this tweet and basically spoiled the whole book for myself. But it didn't really matter because one, I don't care. And two, I still don't think anything's really come from this story. So this is what Comic Storian says. Got the war is over. Before people go around spouting, it means nothing because they didn't read it. Here's the ramifications. I fucking read it. Just want to say that. We've been covering this whole thing. And, and it means nothing. Yeah. So FYI, I do think that is unfortunately the fallback to and I, i'm guilty of this the fallback to a lot of comic youtubers is they'll be like you didn't read it man you didn't understand it i'm like no there's a difference between reading it and not liking it and there's also reading it. nothing happens like nothing big has happened from this kind of like every time tom taylor does something big and says it's gonna change the world and it doesn't right so like he says batman is no longer working with the bat family due to zur and raw's influence he hasn't really been working too well with the Bat Family this whole run, to be honest. Yeah, uh, and it's also not new. He's gotten away from the Bat and Family also, a million times. I I will say this this because I I went ahead and, and searched for his tweet and I'm looking okay. at it with you. So he says Batman is no longer working with the Bat Family due to Zur and Raw's influence. Mm -hmm. You have seen because again he is talking about Gotham War. Yes, if you read Gotham War. By itself, Zurn Raw in total mm -hmm. from start to finish with all the tie-ins and everything else shows up twice. Yes. When he says 
we are vengeance or whatever it was in the in the uh in the reflection of the puddle in the on, on the street in the very mm. beginning of this gotham war that was the first time second time is literally in this book yeah in the the, the last page or one yeah. of the last pages that's it there is no influence of zurin raw people talk about it mm -hmm. but zurin raw was not in this gotham war sorry he wasn't yeah, I know those two instances. I don't want to sit here and confirm that it is two because there was what at least two Batman issues during this run, if I'm not mistaken. I, he probably showed up in both, and that was so that means there would be more than two. I just want to throw that out there just in case we get fact checked. Uh, I but I understand but, where you're coming from. He he's not a big part of this story, is what yeah. you're saying. I agree. I agree with that. Um. So, and I also don't think. I don't the way he words it here. Batman is no longer working with the Bat, Bat family due to Zer and Ra's influence. I think there's a lot more factors than that. Yes, you know what I mean. Because Batman has always been worried about, um, you know, the the Bat family not having uh, happiness that he's never going to have. You know what I mean? Which we've we've talked about this a million times on the podcast. We think it's really stupid that Batman is the only character in history that can't be happy. We think it's dumb. Tom King showed otherwise. Um, Batman is cut off from the Bat Network. Okay, the Bat Network was the first time this thing was ever introduced. Like, I think it's kind of stupid that there's just one server that can cut Batman off from everything. I think it's kind of idiotic, in my opinion. But Batman instantly was back online when talking to Barbara and everybody. How is he cut off? You would think Barbara is part of the Bat Network. Why would he have access to her? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to answer that? Because, like, what, what is cut off that he doesn't get to search his file and stuff? You tell me Batman cannot just go back to that apartment and turn it back on? A quick reset? Like, well, when, when learning about him getting cut off in the Bat, Bat Network, it's at the end of the book. Yes. And you don't see him talking to Barbara after that. So I can see the, the conversation about that. Uh, I can but see reasoning behind yeah, trying to say that happened. Not get cut off. Didn't like did Grace cut him off like in that thing when they were fighting? Or did I read that wrong? Um like in, it um, happened in the last issue or the previous issue when Damien when he left Damien, remember? And Batman was all mad after he beat everybody's ass. Wasn't he putting in the codes there to get it out? Like did he not complete it? I'm not entirely sure. So all right, maybe we're wrong there. But again, he and look, maybe because uh, I'm not here to be like, oh, a comic story is wrong. I just don't think anything came from this war because it's not the first time Batman's been cut off from his stuff, right? Like, we know that. The, we, Zdarsky just made up the Bat Network to make things somewhat worse. I fucking guarantee you Batman is still going to be using things. Oh, you know what? You're right because he's referencing, he says... You were right about one thing. And Dick Grayson says, what's that? He says, disconnecting me from the bat box from our network. So he's talking about something that happened prior. So it mm -hmm. was sometime during this event. Okay. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I thought. And then he instantly comes back and has comms with everybody. So like, is that not there? Are the comms separate from the bat network? Like, and I just think it's to put any emphasis on that. I better not see Batman using any kind of technology going forward because then what is the network? The network's the, basically the internet for Batman, right? Like that's essentially what it is. But I, I just don't think we're not going to see that. Like, I think it's just, a, a, I think it's, it's like the hand, right? He, he cut it off and it's just like, Oh, like it never happened. Batman's going to be using tech in the next few issues. I guarantee it. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to see him doing pen and paper kind of shit, taking notes. Like, I just don't understand it because it, it kind of like it's going to hinder him. You know what I mean? So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Batman. Next thing he says, is Batman injected Red Hood with fear toxin. Uh, if his adrenaline spikes, he's racked with fear. Um, He already got over that. I mean, we saw that like yeah. he got over his fear and he blew he blows up a meteor that shatters everything into pieces. Again, this is the type of writing that doesn't matter. Like, he overcame his fear in two issues. And yeah. now people are going to be like, well, no, he's going to still have to deal with it, and they're probably going to have to... Yeah, they're probably going to write a Rick Grayson story 
for a red hood. Are we going to care? Who's going to read it? Who's going to care about that? You know what I mean? This is another thing where they are trying to make Red Hood be different instead of just let Red Hood be Red Hood. They're trying yeah. to give him this story to revamp his character and make him good again or whatever. Red Hood is an asshole. He's not a, he's not a good person. No. We've talked about it on this podcast before. He should be a villain. He should be a villain, in my opinion. Um, but like, but they, they want a redemption, right? They don't want any Bat family member to be bad. He should be the one that's bad. Yeah. He has a reason to hate the Bat family. He's, look, as a middle child, I totally understand how you look at your other family and you're like, they get love more. That's what Red Hood has. He has problems. And he also can he easily has the best grudge out of anybody. Somebody killed me and you didn't kill them. Like, that's huge. Not, not only that, like, here's, here's the big thing that, like really angers me when it comes to like wanting to give all this decision. And I understand it's the popularity of the character, yes. right? It's just the popularity of the character. So they need to do something with the character. You have Duke Thomas right there that you have done literally nothing with. He popped up in one panel in this fucking book. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time I've seen Duke Thomas in like two years. Like, and he can go invisible. When did that happen? I think it's supposed to be a part of his like newest slash old powers. We did read a story where he was like uh, at like an auction sale for like uh -huh. villain. Do you remember that? He was like at an auction sale for like villain weapons or whatever. Uh, I vaguely and remember he, that. And he was able to manipulate the light. But here's the problem. He's had shadow powers now. Yeah, yeah. See, that shouldn't he, be able to work because he can't manipulate light anymore. It, it's so confusing with Duke Thomas. They need it. He needs, if any character needs to be, ha, needs a mini series and revamped. Or, yeah. Yes. It's Duke Thomas because, yeah, it, it's like Outsiders never happened. And from my understanding, he left Batman all alone. Again, Bat Family leaving Batman. Um, they all left Batman alone to go learn their own things, and now Duke just magically has his light powers back. Like again, inconsistency in writing with these characters. Um, Lazarus pits have been revived or something similar beneath Gotham. How many times have the Lazarus pits been well back and so destroyed? looking in the comments, people are like, Oh, so you're saying Lazarus Planet is now meaningless to the continuity of the mm. DC universe. And Comic Storian says. Uh, Lazarus Planet blew up multiple Lazarus pits around the planet. There is one Lazarus pit like thing, but we don't know if it's a true pit. Damien is also working against the Bat family right now. He is the only one who sided with his father, and Selena admittedly admitted her faults, uh, but then died redeeming herself. She did the usual Gotham thing of standing on a rooftop far away. To show Batman she's alive afterwards, but didn't come back to own. Like he, he, like he. he this has nothing to do with the Lazarus planet no longer being valid. Like yeah. he, he completely redirected. Yeah. The conversation to something else. Yeah. No, it, it's it's the fact that okay, they just destroyed another thing that another writer tried to like yeah. put into the DC, which is comics, which is comics. Yeah. I do think there is a follow up tweet to this, by the way. Um, but anyways, uh, moving on from that, people believe Catwoman is dead. What's confirmed at the end that she is not. Oh, we, if you read solicits, obviously that was going to be, I don't even know why he mentioned this part. Like, I don't even know why you mentioned the Catwoman thing. Like we know she's not yeah. dead. We have a solicits and, and again, if she's dead, like we already read stories where she's been gone recently. Like it doesn't really matter. Like she was Catwoman, Catwoman was technically dead when she went to jail. Cause there shouldn't have been a Catwoman, but there was a replacement already. You know what I mean? Um, but that one's just like, I think it's unnecessary. And then few minor things that are involving Tim, Dick, Vandal Savage, and his daughters. These probably won't get mentioned again. They won't. You think we're ever going to see San, San, what is her name? Sandal Savage or Scandal uh, Savage? Scandal. Scandal yeah. Savage. Such a She's stupid She's probably going to show up in Catwoman once or twice. And then yeah. we're never going to see her again. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are, what are the things that came from Dick and Tim? Like Dick okay, was all so, like I learned stuff. Yeah, Dick Grayson, like 
the conversation between him and Bruce is basically Bruce like saying like, hey, like essentially in non-essential saying, hey, you're the new Batman of the DC universe. Like yeah. you're going to have the moral high ground. I'm going to be on my own working underground, blah, blah, blah. Make sure that the family lives a good life. And yeah. so like you're putting all of this weight and responsibility on Dick Grayson now, essentially. Yeah. And then with Tim, Tim I, I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's like what Chip Zdarsky was doing at the very beginning of the story, like calling him a soldier, leaving him behind, having his neck slid open at one point, remember? And then like going what he had to go through with this issue, uh, basically almost getting murdered by all of the uh, rogues gallery of Batman. Like maybe there's trauma there, I guess. I'm not entirely sure, mm -hmm. but like it, there's nothing here that's like, oh, I can't wait to find out Tim's like evolution of his character yeah. after what happened of Gotham War. Like, yeah, no, it's it's like there's there's literally nothing in Gotham War that I am waiting to see a result of. Yeah, and that's what needs it. whenever an event happens. The number one thing that people's question should be is. What happens next? Yeah. And with Gotham War, I do not care about what happens next. Yeah. Because that's how bad it was. Yeah. There was nothing of importance here. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, Clay. Did we ever get a formal, like, introduction to Riddler and Batman working together during this whole thing? Uh, yes and no. So. There was, of course, the ending of one issue mm -hmm. where, like, you introduce Riddler's going to be a part of the story. Like, yes. you see him in the room with all the monitors. Mm -hmm. Then there is a brief moment where Batman is talking to Riddler, but literally nothing gets settled. There's information that is shared. Yeah. But it's information that literally has nothing to do with the story. And then they're like, oh, you're working with Riddler too. You're yeah. a menace to society. And that's the Bat family fighting more and more. Yeah. And then at the end of this book, he goes to Riddler again. Riddler has one of the worst riddles in all of Riddler's history. Yeah. Oh, I am a, oh, what, I, I have to read this. He is, he says, uh, I am a cat scratch of a number. What am I? You're the Roman numeral three. Yeah. My God. Dude, the dialogue in this book was horrible. Um, There is one part where Jason is saying something that is just so bad. Where is it at? It's like a stupid drawing of Jason, too. Uh, he's like, you're losing it, man. Like, he just, like, says some stupid stuff you'd hear in, like, a 90s sitcom. Um, Let's see. Where is it at? Um. Oh, yeah, he's all like, between uh, the shit you just did to me and letting the manor go, you're slipping, man. Dick is right. Your stupid science project, Zer, is in there messing you up. Like, it's, it's first so of all, first of all, he hasn't had his fucking money. Like, yeah. how, how do you expect him not to lose the manor? Like, I don't... And also... It wasn't even his problem. Catwoman did it. Wasn't Catwoman here's, the one that switched some shit up that made it available to buy? Here's here's the problem with all of this. Zdarsky being the one to really try to solidify where Batman is supposed to be after everything that has happened with Batman prior. Mm -hmm. Zdarsky never set in stone where Batman like how Batman got the manor back. Yeah. Why he was there. Cause remember we were like, wait, is he in the manor? I thought it, ne it never belonged to him. Cause even in this story, there was some portions that kind of hinted at, he still doesn't own the manor, but he was still in the bat cave, which is a yeah. part of the manor. Like, like there's so many things that are left unanswered. And of course the problem with a lot of these writers is just like, Oh, I don't have to worry about that. I can just write whatever I want because it's not going to be that big of an issue. If I just move past it. It's like, yeah. no, there's so many people that are going to be hung up on that because the rest of the story doesn't make fucking sense because of this one little detail. 
Yeah. You know, the solution to that is I own the manor, but I can't live there because I only think of Alfred. Bam! That's why he's not in the fucking manor if you don't want to deal with the manor. He still uses yeah. the cave. And like, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, these writers are kind of just, I can't believe they just not have given him his money back. Like, it makes no sense. They don't even write freaking uh, I Am Batman anymore. No. Like, so his money's just going to be forever gone? Like, I don't understand it. If you want to just, if you're never going to use that character again, because I don't think they're ever going to bring it back to Gotham, just have Tim come back and be like, here, bro, here's all the money. That's it. Where's Lucius? <laughs> Does Lucius not have a job anymore? Like, I don't under, I don't understand it. Like, so, be like, I'm done cosplaying. Like, that's all you got to do. And here's the thing that's stupid. Because I don't know if you really pay attention to this, Clay. At the very end, we see that Catwoman didn't die. Because here's here's what they tried to make very dramatic, which I thought was so lame. So this meteor falls to the sky, falls out of the sky. It's supposed to have this new type of uh, whatever. Uh, or like, so apparently, I think what happens was they collected all the pieces, right? All these fragments that they were trying to get. And it acted like a magnet to bring this comet to the to Gotham, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how it worked, right? So this new comet that was supposed to give Vandal Savage all eternity was falling down. It crashes, makes a uh, like an explosion or a big crater. Vandal Savage is there like, oh, I should touch it first because you don't know what's going to happen. And, and his daughter's like, no, 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 I want this too. I worked this out. He stabs his daughter. So she's almost going to be dying. He's like, oh, this is different. Ah! And then he like falls down. To he his gets dad. sucked into the meteor. Yeah. Which is so, I, I, I don't get it. Whatever. Yeah. So he, he, you know, the meteor is exploding or sinking or whatever. And it's like, oh, no, there's this crater. And, you know, his daughter's about to die. She's stabbed, holding on for for dear life. And Catwoman's like, uh, Marquise or whatever her, the hell her name was. Doesn't even matter. And she's like, that's not my name. I'm Scandal. She was like, no. She was all like, the Marquise, I, I know you as Marquise because she was there for me. And I'm going to be there for you. And, like, it's just supposed to be this dramatic moment. We didn't even really, nobody was reading Catwoman. Let's be for fucking real. So we yeah. don't know how close this relationship was. But anyways, she's trying to save Marquise. And she's all like, I got you. And then, of course, Batman's there. He's like, I got both of you. And then Catwoman just falls. We're talking about the woman that can fall from stories and land on her feet. And she mm. just so happens to fall. Now, to be the other side of the coin here, because I know people will call me out about this. This was foreshadowed. Her faking her death was foreshadowed because she was talking to one of her people and they were like, yeah, you tried these people, you trained these people so good that they got away from us. And they're like, oh, they gave you the slip, huh? Maybe that's something that can come in handy later. So she was planning to fake her death, essentially. Because yeah. she's trying to get away from this. But why? I don't understand why she's trying to fake it's, her death to leave. It's she's faking her death so Teeny Howard doesn't have to write Catwoman in Gotham anymore. That's literally it. That's the only reason why. Yeah, yeah, because it it really one she just gave gave up on her whole plan if she's leaving Gotham. Like, oh, I'm gonna make all the criminals be independent and all this kind of stuff. And then she does she does talk about this in the book how she says. A lot of these criminals just want to follow orders, so nothing's going to change. So her whole plan basically went to shit. It still doesn't say why she should leave Gotham. Is she going to leave Gotham to maybe rehabilitate Marquise? But Marquise thinks she's dead now. So why does that matter? Is she going to, like, you got to give us a reason. There was nothing in this story for why she should leave Gotham. It can't be because, like, oh, I can't just deal with Bruce right now. Like, I love him so much, but I need to go away. I am calling this right now, Clay. If I had to make a bet, 60% chance what's his face fucking comes back from the dead while she's gone on this outside of Gotham. Oh, you you said this last last episode. Yeah, yeah I just want to make it clear. I think uh, that fucker's uh, coming back. Uh, I don't even remember his name. Wish uh, Valmont. What, no, but what'd you call him? You uh, Wish, wish, ghost, ghost maker? Yeah, and ghost maker's already a wish. So this is wish, 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 fucking ghost maker. <laughs> like, I, I think he's gonna come back because I think that was the only time 
her book was somewhat readable and she's going to play she's going to re- redo the story and that's what she's going to do but this so time this she's la- probably going to so make this, it right so you're saying this Lazarus pit somehow was like right where his burial site was and boom what well here the, here's the thing remember fragments went all over the world so maybe one of the fragments just so happened to hit where this guy's at and he's going to come back to life or maybe she's going to be like the only time i felt like myself was with with valmont i should bring him back to make up for my sins because here's the thing why did batman start hating catwoman because she killed now she's going to that... have the power of the Lazarus pit and she's going to bring him back. Oh, I kiss. would hate that. I would hate that. Um, but this could be the reason why she's able to have nine lives, right? Oh, Lazarus pit gave me power. Oh, uh, you know what I, mean? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do there. But the very end, after Bruce has his little heart to heart with um, fucking Dick, and he's like, y'all be the parents now, you and Barbara. He goes back, finds another ma- like secret area that used to belong to the penguin. Riddler just shows up, tells him a riddle. He mentions three Jokers. So here we go. Zadarsky bringing back Joker so he can tell a Joker story and add on to Jeff John's Joker story. Big wow. So shocked Zadarsky is going to be retelling another story. N- Would have never thought that in a million years. Then, the very end of this book, Batman sees a shadowy figure on the top of a rooftop. Obviously, shoots up there to see who it is. They're magically gone. Finds a USB that says, in case of emergency. And then, of course, it's Catwoman saying, Bat-Cat. It says, "Uh, I love that man. He'll always keep my secrets. I guarantee you, that USB has a bajillion dollars on it. Or has all the information for all the money he needs in the world. And that's why he needs to keep it safe. So she's maybe making amends for like, oh, you lost all your shit. Now Batman's going to have all his money in the world. And he doesn't even need the Bat Network. Because he's probably going to create a whole other network. But here's the thing, though. So, again, panel progression matters. Mm -hmm. Okay? Regardless of what Teeny Howard fucking says. Yes. You see Batman standing. He looks kind of down to the side. He says, cat. She says, bat. Mm -hmm. And she's holding out her hand. And I assume that the panel progression is that it zooms in. And it says, in case of emergency. Yes. So are you saying that Batman now has that USB drive? Or she has the USB drive? I would think Batman would. But from this panel progression, as you pointed out, it looks like she has it. Why would she show her case of emergency thing and then leave? You know? I. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. And why would Batman just... Why would they both fly away? If, if I have to headcanon here, because that's what the power Teeny Howard has given me, I would assume, since they're, since they're able to fuck between panels and put their clothes back on and go about their day without us knowing, I think she drops it and then they both go away. But I could also see how I, I don't see any reason for her to showcase that. And then they both just fly away. I would assume she's giving it to him. But again, the, as you pointed out, the panel book, she did say he always keeps my secrets, which I would read as like, oh, he's not going to tell anybody that she's not dead. He's going to just let her be dead. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the secret thing. But what what is this in case for emergency fucking eraser looking thumb drive? Like, uh, is she going to give that to him? Because obviously he like, has nothing now. There's there's nothing here that tells me that he gave it to her or she's giving it to him. It's just being showcased. Okay, yeah. for what? Like, what's the reason behind this? Yeah. Is this is this what's supposed to tell her next few stories? This emergency thumb drive? Like, I don't get it. So, like, why even show that? And then there's an epilogue where one of... I think this is a thief that was getting his ass beat the whole series, right? Um, He's breaking into places because he learned from Catwoman. And then he stumbles upon this house and he's like, Holy shit, Bruce Wayne is Batman? Again? we This Gotham War was just revealing Bruce Wayne's identity to everybody. Because we know all the rogues know it now. 
because they went to the manor and they broke the clock that was told to us that they never knew how to open the cave entrance to the Batmobiles and all that stuff. So they were just breaking in through the manor. So they know it's Bruce Wayne who lived there forever. So all of the villains know his identity. And now random people are going to know his identity too, because I don't think Batman's just going to show up to this house and clean up everything. This, I think this is stupid. This mm -hmm. whole, like, you're telling me that Batman is stupid enough to just leave everything unlocked, leave this vulnerable. He did break in, technically. He did break in. I get you yes. what you mean, you know. Yes. But it's Batman. Yeah. Uh, Because uh, here's the thing, too. Because it is a little dumb to think that thieves can learn everything Catwoman knows in a short amount of time. It is very dumb. But Catwoman here's the other break problem. break into the cave. I don't think uh, somebody that has learned from Catwoman could automatically break into the cave. So 100%. Yes. But here's another problem that I have. This is clearly setting up yet another story Chip Zdarsky himself has already done in Daredevil, where, once again, something that we've already seen in DC Comics, by the way, mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne is going to be revealed to be Batman, and that's going to be the new thing, is, you know, Chip is going to write about how, like, oh, you know, I, I'm not Batman, blah, 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 and doing all this other stuff that we've already seen before. It's going to get to a point where Batman is so into the thick of it that Gotham PD is going to force him into prison and we're going to have a Bruce Wayne in prison while Batman needs to be out saving the city type of story. Just like in Daredevil. Like, I am convinced Chip just wants to rewrite his Daredevil story for Batman. Yeah. Um, Batman has already been in prison, if you read White Knight. Mm -hmm. So, been done there. Uh, Batman was also, which is a really good story. Nobody ever talks about Batman Fugitive, which was really great. Yeah. Um, where he technically was on the run as Bruce Wayne. He could no longer be Bruce Wayne. So he had to be Batman 24 seven, which was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I haven't seen anything comic story and done is in a really long time. I think I, that tweet came across me and I was like, no, nothing really came from this story. If you've been reading Batman, which I'm assuming since he makes content on, he's been reading every run of Batman. Um, there's he does a lot of Batman content. I will say that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it brings in the views. Um, but like, there's not a lot happening with this book. And I think to argue that a lot happened here or there was a lot of progression, I think it's just is is um, stretching it, in my opinion. Because Zdarsky, again, has contradicted his writing multiple times. And I don't know if this is the new wave of writers, which Zdarsky isn't a new writer, so I don't know why this would be the new thing. But this idea of headcanoning everything in between the panels is not the way things should be done. There's a reason why I haven't, I don't follow Zdarsky and everybody, but are is Batman selling out? You know? Not that I've seen. It hasn't you know? if if it is, it's not making waves like that of Tom King's Wonder Woman. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm assuming Wonder Woman is printed a lot less than Batman, but um, yeah, I mean Tom King has sold out the first two issues of Wonder Woman and it's now being put into they're reprinting issue two with issue one inside of it, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And uh um, the outlaw edition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's really cool. I who I don't know who's liking Batman right now, to be honest. I just I don't know who this is for. It is very, very out of Batman's like personality. But I will always go back to what I said, man. People see Batman, they don't read Batman. Yeah. And as long as he's and he didn't even do anything really cool during Gotham War. He fought his family. That was kind of cool. Other than that, he was emo for a while cried on top of a rooftop which granted i'm i'm all for men's mental health and stuff like that but like that was very weird for him to do yeah. um and zurin Ra just showed up randomly instead of being throughout the whole comic and now you're gonna tell me he has to go deal with zurin Ra for the next arc like yeah you know what i wouldn't be surprised if bruce ends up making a device 
to get Zurin Ra out of his head, but Zurin Ra becomes an actual person somehow. Like, I, I don't know what they're going to do there. I, I think it's just really dumb. Um, I'm tired of the Zurin Ra stuff. Uh, I I feel like Zadarsky is trying to make Zurin Ra Tom King's version of Bane. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. And it's just like, it's not a compelling story. It's not good. It's boring. But yeah, that, that was Gotham War, ladies and gentlemen. Um, very lackluster. Very boring. We kind of knew that, I mean, there was, you just knew that it was a bullshit story to begin with just to sell books. Because there was no reason for Catwoman and Batman to fight. It was literally, and you could say this about any book, but it was just something that was so dumb for a reason for them to fight. There were so many things you could have done to give a Gotham. And dude, Catwoman and Batman never fought once during this war that they were a part of. Yeah. So like, it was just dumb. The, the book was just dumb. I'm sorry to say it, but I'm glad it's over, but I'm not excited about what's going to continue. You know? Also, what is going on with Robin and them? What's going to happen there? Is that already going to be future? Because, like, uh, last time we saw through Gotham War, Damien was left alone by himself. Yeah. And he was like, oh, my father left me. All right, is that going to play out in Batman and Robin? Like, well... Apparently not, because as soon as Batman was like, you need to go save Tim, get the family and save Tim. Everybody yeah. was like, OK, Batman, follow your orders. Yeah, like I, I think we need to rule with an iron fist when it comes to Batman nowadays and be like, yo, head writer of Batman has to OK everything from the other Bat books. And I'm talking about you have to put out a whole outline and be like, yo, if you're going to mention Batman, talk about Batman, I need to know what you're doing. And I know some people would be like, dude, that's overkill. Nah, get an assistant then. Be like, yo, you need, because I swear to God, DC doesn't have editors. There's just no way. There's no way. If not, they're like how we used to be at our old job. They're watching YouTube the whole fucking day. And yeah. just like every once in a while being like making a check on a list and that's it. They're not doing yeah. anything else because it's just ridiculous. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we got for this podcast. Clay, since you're going to be moving, I'm assuming nothing going on. Nothing going on. I have unfortunately not been able to stream a whole lot because of this move, but I do plan on getting everything back on track once I'm there. And also just to let you know, Juice, I'm no longer going to have sucky internet oh my god could you start editing the podcast in the future that would yes be i could um uh, the fastest internet that is available to me is only ten dollars more than i'm paying now mm -hmm. and it's six times the speed nice. so yeah 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 for those of you that don't know um i have basically out of 200 and something episodes edited like 200 and like 13 of them uh yeah. so you know we were planning at episode 200 for clay to take over then we learned out how bad his internet is and, and i edit the audio but as far as yes. like the video and everything for the youtube it it's gotten a lot harder for me because of how crap my internet yes. is that's no longer going to be an issue in the future yeah yeah so clay will be doing that side basically clay is doing a lot of uh a lot of stuff for batman news weekly right now uh because i have so much other shit on my plate you know, uh, we want to make the channel better. We want to make it grow. We want to get past 500 subs, all that kind of stuff to start bringing some revenue in here. Um, but there's just a lot going on. Uh, and then now Clay's moving. So it's going to be woo, uh, kind of crazy <laughs> stuff. But, you know, well, hopefully 2024 will be a better, brighter spot for Batman News Weekly. And we'll be guys producing a lot more content for y'all. But that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. I am still editing. Uh, I'm editing for the next 18, 19 days to try to get this channel launched. I will announce it. More than likely, uh, it'll probably be something to talk about over the next two weeks if it is going well. But I got to get back to editing that right now. So that is it for this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. As always, he is Fanboy Clay. I am Juice Wayne. And remember, Batman is awesome. Batman!